Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you are, wherever you are. Aloha, I am Manny from Good Dog Press, and how are you guys doing on a Monday night? Yes, I tried to get on earlier, but I got caught in another stream. Unfortunately, I was on Chris, Josh Chris Arts for a while. I thought I was going to break away, but here I am now. And guess what? I have my cohort with me tonight. Awesome. Unbeatable. The desirable Tank Ferret. How are you doing tonight, Tank? Good, Manny. How are you doing tonight, man? <laughs> I'm doing fine. <laughs> I'm doing awesome. Uh, he's not yeah. desirable. He is to me. To his <laughs> wife. <laughs> we are okay like that. You know, we were men. No. You don't get this kind no. of stuff on John Diller's show, that's for sure. No werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> Who else we got with us tonight, dude? We got Todd, Todd. Mulroney, creator of Ignition. And uh, like this guy is like straight up like an ambassador for the uh for the comic comic book community, man. He's he's networking, getting people connected. He is awesome. Well, What's thank up, you. Todd? I am. I'm trying. Uh, I take my opportunity and make the most of it, especially when I was on uh, Nasser's show the other day. I made sure I was doing John's artwork. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so That's it's awesome. all out. <clears throat> It's all for the betterment of all of us. But we have someone else with us, and I don't know who that is. Ooh, you, you've never met the great, my greatest wrench of all time. Oh, this is KG. This is KG. KG oh. is in the house. How you doing, KG? I'm doing good, Todd. Thanks for asking. Oh, what is on your head? Oh, that's a cap. Yeah, it's a oh, ball it's cap a red... with the dolphins. Oh, dolphins? I thought that was a Red Sox cap. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I know that's... For you now. that's dolphins because I used to be on submarines. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's an ex-submariner. Oh, Submariner. So you, have... so you guys have something in common. You, you both work for the KGB. <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't want to go there. <laughs> no, we know we'll be taken up there. Thought, that is uh, a red herring. I yeah, KG stood for something. <laughs> That's my initials. He is the man. Alrighty, what else I got here? Uh, talk some of yourselves. I'm still working. I'm still trying to get people in here. Oh, I understand. That's why I'm working right now. I'm working on this scalpel clad and nothing but uh, gear. Cool, yeah. Cool, cool. No clothes. No All naughty right. bits either. No naughty so bits? Cleverly hid. No, I cleverly hid the naughty bits inside the gear. Oh. She's armored in elegance. Ooh, but she's got some sexy legs. Yeah. Yeah. I even drew, uh, you know. <clears throat> worked on the, the structure down here on the toes so oh. got good feet that is awesome gotta have that man you gotta be able to draw feet so many people uh, get away with it uh, I hate feet oh you know course, most artists actually feet. I hate I hate hands more than feet feet's not too bad the hands I get problems with Oh, I just got to work at it a little bit more. Oh, I understand that one. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, the hand is just about as complex as the rest of the body put together. Mm -hmm. It really is. Hands and faces are actually, uh, they're complex creatures. That's why they're not, uh, easy. No, it's not. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. That's right. Right. What are you going to be drawing for us tonight, Todd? I'm not sure. I got to do some work. <laughs> I got to do some, uh, some more of this children's book. Get this out of the way. Oh, so we... that's, that's fine. You do what you got to do. I do what I got to do. Hank's got to do what he's got to do. And KG's just hanging out. <laughs> KJ, you gonna be drawing for us tonight? 
I'm trying to, yeah. What you gonna be doing? Are you gonna be drawing some circles and some triangles and some squares and some stick figure guys? Yep. <clears throat> That's what you gotta start off with is basics, right? Yeah, Rick better watch out. <laughs> Rick, you better watch out. KG might replace you. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Rot <laughs> Raggy. Yep. Yeah, K KG's been doing his exercise. What what kind of exercise did he do today, KG? Well, so I was uh, practicing uh, drawing some eyes. Cool. Plus, I was also doing you know, my uh, circles and triangles and trying to make some fig uh, some uh, things that work and not coming out too good. <laughs> That's fine. Some keep practicing, though. So, some days it just doesn't come, you know. Some days you, yeah. you try to draw and just just do your circles and your triangles and your squares and like that's about it. All I'm going to get today. But as long as you keep that muscle going, you know, it is a muscle you're training yourself. Oh yeah, no. Art isn't a hobby; it's an expression of someone. Of, of yourself so it's that means it comes from your core so it like with anything like you, you know you want to be a good at athlete well you have to train that into your soul mm -hmm. you want to be a good soldier you train it into your very being you know um it's brutal <laughs> it's unforgiving and brutal does does he know how to bring in artwork like practicing maybe inking someone else's work or uh, I don't know what. Hmm. That would be interesting if you were to try to ink somebody. Do you think you're up to try to ink somebody yet, KG, or are you just still too young in the art business? Yeah, so I'm still trying to figure out how to do that because uh, when, whenever I do bring something in, I can't uh, really seem to get the. Uh, <clears throat> you know, so like if I'm trying to uh, do flats and all that. I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing. Right. You know, you know what I'm going to have to do one day. Uh, Tutorial. KG, uh, you and me just going to have to do a private screen. Nobody else, just you and me, and we'll just go go through the do the clip studio and just teach you how to do some stuff. If you're up for it. <coughs> I have a buddy, uh, Stephen Wilcox, who used to be um you know uh, a very oh i don't want to be you know not very skilled very talented had a mm -hmm. wonderful passion for it but not very skilled and then he went and uh started duplicating uh john beer pictures and I watched as this guy that, you know, people like they gave him a hard time for this. And, but I watched as this guy, his skill grew. And now this guy can draw and he can originate brand new poses because, he, because while he was doing this, he was studying his basics, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, yet yeah, now, you know, he's he's doing Marvel trading cards and stuff like that and tops awesome. and stuff like that. Yeah, <clears throat> I know a lot of people that uh, they get their they get their start from 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 drawing after other people, and it's not a bad way to learn, especially you know if it's done in conjunction with learning those basics. Oh yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with learning by you know inking somebody else's work, tracing over somebody else's work, you know, figuring out how they did it. I mean. Nothing wrong with that. You eventually find your own style. Yeah. Uh, I no, hear a uh, comment, actually. I, I think we have a sighting. I think we have a uh -oh. uh, Hebrew in the house. Hey, guys. Good morning. How are you guys doing? <laughs> How are you doing? Hey, you doing dude? Hello. Good. <laughs> how's how's your, your Tuesday morning doing? Good. I slept in today. So I just walked up, walked, woke up and just sat down and 
saw your message, so yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I was surprised that you nice. came on this early. I'm like, hmm, usually you don't come on this early. That's cool. Yeah. Well, the last few the last few uh, week or two I've been mostly taking my kids in the morning to school. My wife's doing it today, so I have a little more time. <laughs> that is awesome. That is super awesome. How are you guys doing? Uh, good, man. Getting back to work. I had a kind of tough day today, but eh, it's okay. I'm no, just okay. Fine. I had to teach a class today, so that wasn't fun. Oof. Part of my duties at work, I have to teach a class. Uh, and well, if you don't do it, perhaps you should get a new duty. Oh, uh, it's part of it was part of the job before I took it. So. <laughs> uh, KG was a student of mine one time too. <laughs> he was actually a very good student in my class. Wonder. Yeah, I like, try. <laughs> well, you did very well. I mean, yeah, it's not the most exciting thing that I have to teach, but it's what I got to do. Part of my job. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm an okay teacher. I'm not a great teacher, but I'm okay. Yes, you're very good, hey, Manny. Don't mm -hmm. sell yourself short. Well, I'm never short, that's for sure. <laughs> but I'm pump. <laughs> oh, man. What you got for us today, today Hillel? What are you going to draw for us? Well, right now I'm working on a this uh, vehicle, I'm trying to get drawn in perspective. Ooh, right. um, you notice on my screen to the left, <laughs> I've got it drawn separately from another page. I'm going to try to reproduce it. So uh, it's very time consuming. Awesome. But, uh, you know, it's good. It ends up looking pretty good, though. KG, somebody in the chat thinks that you're booster. How dare they? <laughs> P.S. Oh Meltzer booster drawing. <laughs> oh, boy, that's funny. On oh. Booster's behalf, I would just like to say, oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, let's see. Should I uh, time him out? <laughs> no. I'm, I'm no, not going to. Don't do that. I know, I know. People without wrenches in my... My chat are very safe. Not like some other chats where if you don't have a wrench, you might not survive a minute. <laughs> <laughs> my people in my chat hardly ever get timed out. My wrenches are very responsible. Very responsible. It's those other shows you got to be watch out for. What the heck is going on tonight, man? What do you mean? Usually we got a whole bunch of people watching us tonight, but tonight it's kind of <coughs> it's a slow night. What's going on? Is there something on TV or something? Some big event? I don't know. Mm. Monday. I know Maybe of. Monday Night Football? Well, Monday Night Football is done. Okay. Mm. I, don't know. Weird. I don't pay attention Maybe. to these things. Maybe they're just... uh. It's all tuckered out from all that turkey that they had to eat all those leftovers. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. I've been eating leftovers so many days in a row. I still had leftovers from lunch today. <laughs> Did you make any yeah. tweets? Tweets? Yeah, tweets. I mean, tweet. Uh, I do a tweet when I first come on. Well, yeah, maybe we should all hey, chat. Try help us out. Let's tweet this out. Let's get some people in here. Let's get the party going. Uh, Chester's yeah. going to come back. Chester and, and Bill is having a secret rendezvous. But they will be back here shortly. But let's, let's give them a welcoming. You know, let's let's tweet this darn thing out. Hey, right. Risey Lee, thanks for retweeting my doing my live stream. Thank you, sir. That's awesome. Yeah, let's get this. Get this party going. 
I have not seen a Rick sighting tonight. I don't know what's going on with Rick. He's boycotting my show after he dissed me on Saturday night. <laughs> he beat me down. Rick beat me down. <laughs> I didn't think he beat me down, but everybody else said he beat me down. <laughs> I was like, what? What do you mean he beat me down? He just he just doesn't listen to me. No more. He doesn't listen to anybody. You know, it, it comes it comes at I think the twenty eight minute mark. If you guys watch uh Saturday night's uh live stream, I was just trying to you know, hey Rick, this is how I, I lay out my skunk girl, this is how I do this, this is how I do that. He's like I don't I already know that. I don't need to do that. I'm like Seriously, you know more than Leonardo and Michelangelo and Picasso and all those other guys. Uh, they all start off this way. I didn't know you're better than they. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness, it was uh, a wonderful foot and mouth moment, wasn't it? <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to be humble. I mean, that's how I learned. I mean. You always got to, in that book that I showed you guys the other night, Dynamic Figure Drawing, if you guys can, uh, KG said you can actually download it off the internet. It's a great book for beginners. Yeah. It is awesome. It is. Yeah. That's a good reference for even seasoned yeah. professionals. So exaggerated. So if you're going to do comic art, I mean, that's like one of the best books. I mean, the anatomy is so exaggerated. It's so off. You know, the guy used to work for Disney, so it's really good stuff. He was an animator for so many years. And we got some more people coming in here. I'm tweeting out right now. I'm going to put all the ats at. Get some people in here. Wow, look at that. Dan Panosian has become such a really good artist. I remember him from way back in the 90s. Right? He used to be an inker. <laughs> Or Extreme Studios. Yeah, was was he on the? Was he an anchor on a uh, profit and stuff? Yep. I thought he was the main artist. No, nah, he started out as an anchor. He didn't become an artist until the last ten years. Maybe a little longer, but yeah, I've seen a lot of his Conan stuff and things like that. But this sort of stuff he's been doing lately, I don't even know what it belongs to. Stanley Dance. Something at Skybound he's doing, I guess. It's amazing. It's awesome. Hmm, 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 hmm. All righty. All right, we're live streaming. Thank you, Todd, for tweeting it out. Retweeting? No problem. All right. Get some of your people in here, some of your peeps. How, how's your show going, Todd? You get any traction over there? Well, um, I don't do one every friggin' day, so... <laughs> you know, and then when I want to do one, nobody leaves any time for me to do one. Everyone's always... You know, Cause it's a weekend. Like I do one weekend show, one weekday show. Mm -hmm. And everybody on the weekend is going, they're doing a show cause they are home. So they do it all different times. So it's just trying to find a place where I'm not stepping on anybody's toes, but it doesn't seem mm -hmm. to be any room. There's, there's no room. You just got to do it. And, and to me, it's like, uh, it's great to do your show and hopefully you get people the next day, watch it. You know, especially for me. I mean, I'm so late, but I'm I have some fans that come the next day and the, the following day, so I'm real happy about that. It's not like I put my videos up and that's it. 
I'm just going to get so many people watching that night and they don't come back. But we get a lot of people that come back and watch you guys. And it's great because it's a team effort. I know that. And we've got you in here. We've got Tank in here. John comes over. Hillel comes over. And so it's a party. I mean, people get bored of watching Scout Girl. They can go look at Scout Zero. They get bored of that. They look at Todd. They get bored of that. They look at Hillel. So there's always a variety up here for people to watch. All right. Hmm. Hello, mighty geek. <clears throat> that a tank you got there going? Hello. Who's with the tank? Say it again. Is that you, Todd? Who's, who's with the tank? Tank? I'm not in a tank. No, no, it's LL. LL's with not the tank. Me. It's kind of a, a flying tank fighter thing. Vicious Tiger was driving his car, and then uh, and he got attacked by the heroes, and so he, he turned it into a uh, tank mode. Cool. So... Open it up real quick so you can see. Here you go. So here's, here it is. Here he's driving his car, and uh, then it gets suddenly uh, taken up in the air by Mind Maiden, and then Viking and Bronto attack it. Bronto reveals one of the benefits of his suit, which he can. Blast things. He's like a laser can in his mouth. <clears throat> so he um, zaps the car, and then um, and then uh, Vicious Tiger is inside of it. Sees what's going on. Button and it transforms. And starts to attack him. I'm gonna be eight. <laughs> what is what is that going on? I hear rumbling. Who's a, who's a rumbling? Sorry, that was probably me coming back on. Okay. Hmm. Yes, yes and Tank. I, I hope Tank doesn't mind. What, I, what I've got on my screen, that's what I was trying to uh, trace today. Cool. Everybody see what I put in the chat? Inside chat? Yeah, that's cool. Heck yeah. No, no, no. In, on the, in, the chat messenger. Oh. Anybody got that? Uh, no. Let me open up my oh, chat. I didn't receive it. No. Anybody got that link to that person? Let's see here. <clears throat> you could have written it in English. That might help. Uh, I don't know. I should type it with a dog on my lap, okay? Oh. <laughs> if you guys do, send them the link. Brian Carden? <laughs> oh. Say it out loud. <laughs> what is it, top secret? Yeah. Does he have like a moniker he goes by? I don't know. Okay, I, th I think I found it. You found it? Yeah. Uh, 
Send him link. Trusty wrench. Yes, he is. He is the man. Twitter him, damn it! Twitter him. I'm almost like I can, I'm almost like I do, but I just can't find it. That didn't come out right. I know it didn't come out right. <laughs> Horrible. Oh man. Do, 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 do. Wow. Oh, I'm what? kind of shocked. Venom, Why are you shocked? Venom, drawn by Ryan Stegman, sells only 5,600 copies. <laughs> See, that that's, you know how sad that is when you think about it? 5,600 <clears throat> copies. That means only 100 copies per state. That is sad. It is. is super sad. I mean, the business is no, not in good shape, people. That, that is pathetic. The number one issue, wow, Ryan Stegman's a good artist. Issue number one sold 5,100. Even that <laughs> is pathetic. It's real pathetic. 5,100 for a Venom. That's crazy. I can't believe that. Okay, Ryan should have a link now awesome. on Twitter. Birthright is a good book. And it, only sold, it sold less than 5,000. Jeez. Mr. KG, can you DM me what his real name is? I mean, his sure. Sister. Thank you, sir. Oh, my God. Return of <clears throat> Wolverine did 46, oh, 4,700. That's the, the issue one drawn by Steve McNiven. <clears throat> they, pro they probably played, paid a lot more than, than you think to get him to, to return and do that book. You think uh, this is um, from them alienating their fans? Or you think there's something else going on with this? I don't think people really gave a damn. It never seemed like Wolverine was really dead. There were so many different versions of him. You know, I think they they kind of screw themselves. You know. Hey, well, you know that's true because I, I I got confused. I, I didn't. Think he was, I thought he they brought him back a long time ago. So did I. I thought, you know, I mean, I, I didn't really get the whole thing. Punisher is only s s selling 4100 Wow. You know, when I was collecting comics way back in the day, subscriptions was over the $100,000 mark. It was that crazy. Right. You know, if, if a book went over... Um, went under hundred thousand about hundred thousand uh subscribers or or issues that was canceled. It's like yeah. you were you were crappy. So for them to be begging for people to buy fifty one hundred of the copies, that's that's so sad. It's crazy. Venom number six only sold twenty eight hundred. Wow. Yeah, Cosmic even, Ghost Rider sold twenty eight hundred too. I mean, that's even more depressing. Right. I mean, what is that? Sixty copies per state. Wow. That's horrible. It's pathetic. It is pathetic. And you know, though, no, seriously, um, what was it? Some dude over at. DC was bragging about, oh, yeah, I've done so much to damage the comic book industry. Look at these great stats. And he's bragging about uh, a uh, that that for this month, comp one, comics are better than they were doing this month 20 years ago. Two, that uh, even though distribution numbers were down, uh, income was up. So the message that I got from that is that, he, that they don't care uh, about us so long as they have our money. So, yeah, and it well, was pretty gross. That's the message they've been giving people, and they people have caught on to that, and they, they're like, well, fine, we don't care about you either. Yeah. No, I won't even buy trade paperbacks. <clears throat> I'm done. I'm only buying indie. That's kind of how I am. I mean, I, 
I've been kind of like sitting on that fence for a while though, because occasionally, you know, I'll find a good trade paperback. I mean, you know, like Son of Batman or Flashpoint or something really cool, you know. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I like this, and then this kind of nonsense pops up, and I'm just like, okay, yeah, no, I'm, I'm absolutely done. He basically said, yeah, I don't, we don't care about the customer. Okay. We just want their money. It's like, oh, so gross, dude. I, well, I can't good. imagine operating business like that. But well, I think the customers are speaking right. <laughs> they lost that the confidence that people had in them. Oh man, I'm reading the chat. John Gillard says some depressing comic sales. Well done. Let's go save this comic sales. Let's go do a great book and let's. Let's make a twenty thousand copies sold, thirty thousand copies sold. Let's do it. None of this BS. Five thousand copies sold. Ugh. Yeah, seriously. Uh, the wife and I were talking, and we're like, "Dude, if your circulation for your book is under thirty-five thousand, it's it's nice if you made money, but it's nothing to brag about." <laughs> Period. And uh, she's been working in publishing for well over a decade. Who is that speaking? Was that Tank? Who is that speaking? Yes. Hey, Tank. It is of the Tank. What's up, man? I haven't talked to you for a while. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been busy with the uh, getting everything together. Uh, P.S. Metzler, it's not Rogue, it's actually Scalpel Zero that uh, KG is drawing, that he's using as his, uh, what you call it, uh, a base. That is a uh, Tank, Tank Ferret's drawing. Yes, it's a very nice drawing. That's yeah, a that's, good one that's to use. It has decent chapter. form. Hmm? <clears throat> okay, so we got a booster in our chat, and we got a Mr. Tundero in the chat, so all you guys better watch out, behave yourself before Mr. Tundero strikes you down with his mighty hammer. And you have a bear on the panel. Ooh, and we got a bear in here now. Okay. Oh no, bear sightings. Bear sightings. Oh no, you know that the bear is here. Now Booster's going to jump in. Booster is on the fence in the chat. He's like, eh, I don't want to go in there. Oh, there's a bear. I'll jump in now. <laughs> <laughs> Or I'll just talk about him enough that he gets mad and comes in and oh, defends himself. Well, that, that's what ERTs does on uh, Josh Chris show all the time. I'll just be in the chat, just cruising, and then he start pestering me and scolding me and coming on like, oh, okay, I got to go on now. <laughs> he got me on the hook. I'm baited him. <laughs> now, P.S. Melter says it's a uh, it's man bear pig. Now, I, I, I will have to correct you here. It's man bear razorback. Yeah, much cooler. Ooh. Much cooler. Yes, it is. Super cereal, guys. Super cereal. Super cereal. Super cereal. No. Are we talking about Ezra Miller again? No. No. What did you do this time? Talking about Al Gore. Oh, Al Gore. Oh, gracious. Goodness gracious. Super That's cereal. A special human. <clears throat> That's who Ezra Miller reminds me of. Okay. Al Gore? <laughs> yep. Yeah, kind of like Al Gore with personality, I guess. <laughs> oh. Well, you're giving him too much credit, man. Oh, I come on now. Like, like those fashions or not, that stuff was straight from Milan. <laughs> I mean, you know... Uh, that was pretty trendy stuff. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay, I'll give it to you. It's not a masculine sense of fashion, but eh, it's fashion. <laughs> hey, Kay, uh, could you bring uh, bring down the uh, point of view on the uh, your art a little bit, please? There you go. This is, uh, is this something that... Uh, Tank uh, wrote that you're working on, or is this something you drew? 
That's uh, something I found on uh, Instagram that the tank had drawn. Oh, I see. Well, I don't know. Those those breasticles are nowhere near sloppy enough. We got to fix that. <laughs> uh, I'm working on tracing, tra trying to get my you know, little techniques down a little better. I recommend people go out and get like magazines and a sharpie and uh, draw the structure on all the photos of the people in the magazine. What's a magazine? Any magazine. People, <laughs> National Enquirer, Daily News, whatever. Then you can find those at the library. Well, you know, you just go pick them up in, this, in the checkout at the supermarket. They're, no, they're was, cheap enough. I was being a smart. I mean, yeah. like the whole magazine uh -oh. era is almost over, man. Oh, no, checkout stands still have tons of magazines, and they push them all the time. Yeah, they do. And it turns out, like, the uh, distribution companies, they buy back over 80% of all the magazines they put on the stands now. Yeah, it's uh, you have to offer your product digitally as, as well as, you know, whatever. What's Hillel working on? Cheap printing, man. That's the key. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I am working on um, Vicious Tiger's car ship. Transformed from a car into a ship and zapping people. Mm -hmm. Taking down. This year. Where is it? Dave. <laughs> <sighs> Got a lot of things up in here. <clears throat> Esther. Yeah. You got to quit smoking, man. Dude, it's not the smoking. I have like a, I think I got like a touch of bronchitis or something, dude. Oh, really? Yeah. No, it's, it's never the smoking. Oh, no, it could be the smoking, but I'm also sick as well, so. <sighs> I'm on yeah. antibiotics now. Yeah, you sounded like what was it two weeks ago? You sounded horrible. Yeah, no, it's um, yeah, that thing got a hold of me. Okay, so here's the <clears throat> here's the damage that the uh, the car ship did to Bronto. It, it uh, you know, he Bronto's wearing a kind of a a suit and has a mechanical dinosaur head. He can stretch out and grow bigger and hear the ship zapped it pretty good. That is cool, though. He's uh, blocking the rays with his spinning axe. That's nice. Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of it's kind of Thorish, but you know, I thought, well, it looks good still. Oh, yeah. And Tank's over here doing art. <laughs> hmm. Did you so happy to hear our depressing dialogue that was happening before you got on here? No, I didn't. Bill and I were talking about the uh, script. Uh, what were you guys talking about? We were talking about the depressing art sales for comic books. Oh, no, I... we the... like... yeah, oh, joke the numbers? Yeah, they're there. bad. Yeah, he tried to make it look like they were in the three of their books were in the top ten. And are uh, the top five, but but they were really books that were um, number ones, so they were overshipped, like they did with Iron or uh, Iceman. My so, God. you know, people were onto it right away, and they they criticized the heck out of them. Good. Well, they're they're doing really poorly. That's for sure. They are. Yeah, I mean, we're we're just going over the numbers, and we're hearing fifty one hundred, twenty eight hundred. Is like serious. I mean, that, that's, that's like just shipped, right? Yeah, that's just Those are units. Yeah, units shipped, so they're not even real sales. 
So what's the story about all the books that they dumped? Uh, they dumped a uh, whole bunch of stuff they couldn't sell onto a, um, a thrift store, a chain in America. Yeah, Dollar General, probably. I, uh, I don't know. I saw Weaponized Nerd Rage talking about it. it was, he said Ollie's. Oh, I don't know that one. Yeah. As I say, the Midwest, Dollar General is huge. I mean, every, every small town has one. Every medium-sized town has three. Every large town has, that's like, they don't, they don't really penetrate there yet. But um, they're carrying, God, I saw, I saw some, a Gary Frank graphic novel, uh, Image put out. I mean, and then, and then they'll do like, they'll bag comics and sell three for five bucks. Like back in the old days where you go and you'd find a bag of comics, you know, pre-sealed. But, um, mm -hmm. oh, wow, that doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, they just. Yeah, no, it's uh, pretty unfortunate. What do you guys think uh, about all this uh, nonsense going on the border? Like, looks like a war, war zone. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I think that's the ideology that's been that's being pushed is is to allow something like this. I mean, this is the only direction it could head ahead in was was uh, see who's more serious, you know. So Trump's gonna have to respond seriously to it. Yeah, and if you if you if you catch the videos, the real videos of things that are going on, there there aren't there aren't any women and children fighting down there. No, but I, like I'm I open it up here on my uh, Google Plus. The first thing I see is from NBC sh Chicago, and it says. Right. President Donald Trump is strongly defending the U.S. use of tear gas at the Mexican border to repel yeah. a crowd of migrants that included angry rock throwers, but also barefoot crying children. I would uh, I would recommend you go look at uh, Thomas Wichter's YouTube channel. But, but can, I, can I say something about this, though? That this is the stuff that happens with Israel all the time. This is, you know, for us, it's like, you know, breakfast. Yeah, that's funny because that was that was one of the titles on one of Wichter's video is like the U.S. border is like the Gaza Strip because it's it's exactly that it's like you know people trying to jump your border and throw rocks down your face and tell you you deserve it you know no we've got we've got uh, people who um, professional protesters yeah and they'll even they'll even pay kids and there was one girl who. She's she's been known for a while, and she she uh she finally went to jail for a little while because she was slapping soap, but it wasn't her first time. It was she had actually done it before, but she was just getting you know called on it. So I mean, the thing is, is that um, this is all part of a strategy, and it's a strategy that we've seen over here for years, and it's coming to the U.S. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be our new bread and butter now. And so, what, it all relies on the, it all. The whole thing relies on. This whole strategy relies on people feeling sympathetic, and you know they play on on the emotions. And what happens is, is that in this age, what they do is they go out, they provoke you while holding video cameras, waiting for you to snap and say something incorrect, even if you've been very patient the whole time. And they wait. They, they just provoke you until you snap, and then they get that on film, and then that's what makes it onto the news. Yep. You know, that's when I was a kid. We called that dirty pool. Yeah. Well, we still do. Uh, the thing about it is the, I mean, all they have to do is just go through the process. America has the most lenient immigration uh, laws in the world. Well, that's the whole point. The whole point is to destroy the process. The whole point is just open borders. So you know who's backing this whole this whole propaganda machine, and people's oh. lives are, are being pawns. I mean, they're just pawning these people. Well, why do you think these people all of a sudden just started marching in a caravan up to America's borders? Why do I you mean, think that was by chance? There had to be promises tied to it. There had to be money tied to it. Oh, I'm sure they've paid people to get them moving. Yeah, either that or, you know, or they told them what all the everything that there was going to I mean, in order to have that many people have resources the whole time, you had to have a three mile train of trucks just supplying food and water. 
I mean, they weren't starving the whole way from Venezuela. They were fed and watered. You know, they had blankets. They had they had tents. Uh, it didn't just happen. It wasn't a grassroots movement. It was multi multi million dollar freaking movement. Oh yeah. But I personally am very happy that Trump is holding his ground. He will. I hope. Well, dude, it's complete nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. Why should people just be able to walk across the country's border? Well, and the whole point sense. the whole point of it is to attack Trump. The whole point of it is to make him look like an unfeeling uh, dictator. Yeah, but uh, That's my for some of us, we're actually quite proud of him. Well, most of us are, really. But, but, I mean, again, it's not about having a rational debate. This is about about turning this into an irrational debate. I mean, this is about, um, again, using feelings as a weapon, using um, uh, disingenuousness and, and falsehood as weapons. And, I mean, this is the... Uh, this is the, the direction that this is going in. It's the, only, the only way you can do it is, is you, you go along with it, you don't go along with it. <clears throat> well, America now has a political party that has embraced, you know, a, a, a fascist agenda. I mean, that, there's nothing, there's no mincing words here anymore. That's That's what the Democratic Party is. Sure. Yeah, well, I think I call them socialists because uh, fascists are nationalist uh, socialists, so it's a little different. But I get you. Yeah. Point. No, no, and, and and yeah, with the nuances, yeah. But their their ultimate their ultimate goal is 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 I guess it is socialism because when you think about it, socialism is it's just as evil and destructive as as anything else. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. Oh, look man. at that. Um, look at that lady who won in New York. Um, What's her name? Uh, Ortez, yeah. Uh, is it Ortez? Or, well, you know the lady I'm talking about. Yeah, she has no experience whatsoever. She's actually she actually did a GoFundMe to pay for her. Uh, hey, we're we are going from one depressing subject to the next depressing subject tonight. Well, What's going on tonight. <laughs> well, one thing though, Manny, is we can switch gears pretty quick, but it's important for us to be, re, you know, to to acknowledge that light these things are happening. But it's also important for us to not dwell on things and also be positive, too. You're absolutely right. Okay, so we're going to talk about chocolate chip cookies now. So No, I mean, yes, I understand. I mean, uh, I could go off. I could go off for hours on this subject. Trust me. So go um, off. But uh, I think you guys have said, right? Well, he is sitting off for me, so I'm not going to go crazy. Uh, I'll come off as a bigot or some heartless person. Well, Good Dog Press has a, has a theme. I mean, you do have a theme. You are very positive, inclusive. You're a good guy. You know, you like everybody. And we don't want to create any kind of animosity on your channel. So, I, you know, sure. I apologize for that. John Diller does say that, Manny, I thought politics were forbidden on this channel. Okay. There we now we know. Well, no, it's it's not hey. forbidden. It's just that we don't go off on tangents for a long time on it. It can be brought up. I mean, I'm not going to stop no, no, you guys. I, that's for I sure. think we should just make a rule that John's politics are always forbidden. That should be the rule. Well, that that's true. Right. But <laughs> yeah. all right, guys, um, I got to step out for a little bit. I got to go take care of stuff and assist with dinner. Oh, uh, I will course. be back on here in a little bit. Of course, you know that. All right. <clears throat> Dinner. What time zone is he in, man? Well, he's Pacific. Well, he's got like 152 children, so he has to start hours early. <laughs> it keeps on getting bigger and bigger every day. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of of eating times, huh? Bellies get hungry all throughout the day. He's probably cooking all day long, man. He's got a big pot of chili. He's always throwing kidney beans in or something, right? Mm. Oh, there you go. There you go. Nothing wrong with chili. Mm. Mm. Unless it's from Zippies. 
So John Dillard is calling me heartless. That is so nice, John. I love you too, man. <laughs> Oh boy. Call my heartless John. I like my page one. I'm gonna have to put this into a real page. Yeah, it looks cool, definitely, dude. So nope. is 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 it a secret what you're working on or I'm working on uh my my story that uh Chester and I are doing together for Tales from Beyond the Gate. This is going to be a night night scene of a. Uh, I I did I did pull from Manhattan, and this is looking from Brooklyn, and all these little spots in the foreground are. Um, it's an old port that got ripped up. And so all the supporting posts are still in the water and they kind of look like gravestones. So I'm going to give them an eerie lighting. I was just laying out the perspective on them. And then I'll have Manhattan in the background. It'll be a night scene. And then I was just placing my caption boxes and I'll look at, uh, you know, how many, how many words I have and, and the spacing on that and decide on their, their size. Um, but we've got a title box and, and a small narration and then page one, big splash page of the big city with an eerie foreground. And hopefully the perspective leads the eye. The goal is that the perspective will lead the eye to page two, you know, awesome. no yawning. that's, that's a smart stuff. Sequential art. That's the plan. Mm. Keep moving the eye. I spent the last uh, six months studying um, artists I didn't like, but did a lot of comic books. <laughs> <laughs> and they're great storytellers, but I just didn't appreciate their art because um, they're old school, you know. And I liked a lot of old school artists. But, you know, I mean, gosh, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. So the guys from the 60s and 70s, some of their stuff would just was not so appealing. Until I got older, I was like, okay, I'm going to force myself to study their panel work. Mm -hmm. so I think I, I spoke to this a little bit maybe last Thursday or Friday, but like Dick Dillon and Don Heck were the two guys who who, do, who have done probably, between the two of them, I bet they did about 60,000 pages of art. I easily. Be, easily, yeah. So you have two guys who did that many pages. And they are <clears> not... They're not, and people don't talk to them like about them like they do John Buscema, you know. But actually, they're quality, man. They're good. They tell stories. They tell stories really well. And what they do use really well, I can take, and then I can put my style and my spin onto it for what for whatever I can add to it, you know. I remember I remember Don Hick doing a Flash, a uh, couple panels where Flash was appearing in two panels side by side. He was kind of tricking Iris that he wasn't the Flash. Oh yeah! So he yeah. was in front of her as Flash, and then he was behind her as 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 um, Mary Allen. Do you remember that one? He kept on yeah, going back and forth. That was such an awesome panel by Don Hick. I may have that. I know. I think I have that. I, uh, I, I grabbed a bunch of old Flash comics. And the other thing about Don Heck is he would do more than one book a month. Oh, yeah. You know, he would do two or three books a month. They were they were workhorses. Yeah, exactly. So he probably he'd probably be mad at me that I spent so many hours just working on one page. <laughs> well, so we so I have a yeah, but I'm I'm gonna make a little Don Heck doll and I'll have him like look at me. He's like, "What are you doing? Get it done." Shit. Okay, sorry. Okay, well, sorry. Here I go. That's cool. All right. So this one's going on now. Page two. This is where I start getting serious. Get some perspective. Do you want some names of some modern guys that tell good stories that aren't flashy? They're all about, sure. You know, telling the good story through their art. Telling, uh, like you're talking about moving the eye and good composition. Yeah, like Matt Wagner. I know you've probably read a lot of his stuff, right? 
I wouldn't I wouldn't put Matt Wagner in that category, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Well, let's see who you got. No, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michael Lark. Okay. Um Tom Cocker. Okay. Uh how do you spell Cocker? Uh, B-O-K-E-R, and it's T-O-M-M. -M. Okay. Uh, K-E-R. Geis. Obviously, Butch Geis would go well, in there. Yeah, he's not new, though. So. No, he's not new. <clears throat> Tom Cocker, Michael Lark. Um, Mac Chatter, M-A-C-K. Okay. Uh, and the last one, obviously, you probably know of Lee Weeks. Oh, yeah. Excellent storyteller. Well, see, no, I know. No, you're looking at, and what I'm saying is when I look at these old guys, I, I'm not necessarily looking at the, their, line, their skills for line work, you know, because they're very simplistic. Very, uh, yeah. The, yeah. They didn't use the balance that, like, Lee Weeks uses now, you know. No, Lee Weeks has always been amazing. And same with uh, Steve Epting. Um, yeah, Steve Epting's my favorite, too. Yeah, Epting and Weeks are kind of like modern-day Alex Raymond's. I mean, right. they're amazing. I, I couldn't even hold – I would never be I – could, I could work for another 30 years and maybe hope to get close to what they can you know. Right. But I was just looking at, like, Heck and, and Dylan just because, you know, they could they could – how they could cram a story into a page, not crowd it, and still do some pacing, you know, and put these things together. That's not even the right words that I want to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Michael Lark is very modern, but does a lot of what you're talking about. You know, his style has changed over the years. Yeah. For, Cause for years, all I've really studied are like the splashy people, the people who could do three panels on a page. So that's about it. And, but they would do these really dynamic paneling, but, their storytelling was weak. I mean, it really was weak. I mean, um, but there's just so many artists. I mean, I overlooked so many over the over the years and studied too few, you know. So I decided I'd, I'd go back to basics and study the. And I study. I mean, I love Kirby. I can't get enough of Kirby. Right. And and uh, <clears throat> like Buster's guest the other night, Corbin was one of my. I think I first was introduced to Corbin probably in like 87 because I was too young for the heavy metal movie when that came out. So I really didn't know Den. Um, but in the er, in the late eighties, Corbin did some Ninja Turtle comics and then they started advertising Den. So that's where I, I, I started getting, he did one, he did one issue in the Ninja Turtles where they're doing like a time traveling storyline and there were pirates and then like the way he did the lighting uh, storytelling that story it, it was it was really i've never seen anything like it i'd never seen and, and i've rarely ever seen anything since I, that was to that level of uh animation on a flat 2d surface you know so i mean i can get really absorbed in watching those guys but i end up getting really absorbed in what they're doing and have a hard time breaking away and breaking it down but um same time, I was just like, okay, so I kind of want to look at these guys who can who, can, who cranked out pages after pages after pages, and why were they always still hired? You know, because they were awesome. Because they were awesome. Because they were consistent. Because they could meet a deadline. Because they could tell and they could tell a story, right? I mean, I don't know. How how's this for a name, Don Perling? Oh, yeah, ah, he was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I grew up reading the Defenders. That's yeah. There's there's the triumvirate right there yeah. of, of the of the old school workhorses. Would be oh, Don Perlin, yeah. Don Heck, and and Dick Dillon, man. Roy Thomas. That man could write like nobody. I used to like Ron Wilson also. Roy Thomas is still alive too, isn't he? Yep. Yes. I met him in New York in 2000 or 2001, and he was just so full of energy then. Of course, of course that was 20 years ago now. But.
He must have been 12 when he started writing comics. <laughs> now, Roy, Roy's really cool. Uh, yeah, Manny mentioned Defender, so I was thinking Union Jack and stuff like that, right? Oh, yeah. No, oh, you know, Sal Buscema, the, 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 the younger brother who never gets enough love. Oh, his, Hulk, his hulks are awesome. Yeah. His right. name or in his silver surfer. Yeah. I mean, that's the, when I started reading comics, the Hulk was all drawn by Sal Buscema. So I love that stuff. Herb Trim of Sal Buscema, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I think, uh, you know, if we can get when we get our business going, man, I would love to hire guys like Roy and Sal to do a book. Is that Sal was, still alive? Sal's still alive. He actually he he got really ticked off at Marvel because they wouldn't give him work. Hmm. Um, no, yeah, and you know Barry Windsor Smith is still around. Well, Sal, Sal is eighty-two years old. Wow. There's a different reason why Barry's not getting work. It's not having to do with. Is Barry Barry doesn't want the work? I guess. Well, I wouldn't say that he doesn't want it, but he did do something where, you know, I don't know. He did do something where he got himself in the crosshairs. Mm. Since we're name dropping, Mike Plug. Plug. Yeah. I love this though. I grew up on him. <clears throat> yeah, he was crazy artist, man. Very creative. Yeah, he did military stuff beautifully. How about uh, um, Charles Vess? Mm. Or uh, which I have you never see enough of, but uh, he really did do a lot of panel work. His, but his panel work was amazing. Or Paul Pope, he did that uh, Adam Strange story, story and the uh, came out on a Wednesday. That was pretty nice. Oh my goodness! Yeah, those old guys are really cool, man. <laughs> yeah, like Booster. So, uh, Chester, John Dillard wants to know, uh, Chester, do you get angry when people call you Buster? No. <laughs> there you go, John Dillard. You didn't take the bait. <laughs> no. And it's, you know, it's interesting. This is a little bit before that time, but uh, you know who I don't hear anyone mention at all these days? Will Eisner. Ooh. That dude is awesome, man. It is. Yeah. He is. Yeah, I mean, his spirit and uh, mm -hmm. those old comics were crazy. You ever see the detail in those things? Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Halil, you ever read uh, Will Eisner's Contract with God? Those are good. Actually, that's a great. It's a. It's like three, four hundred pages. I have a hardcover of that, and it's. Incredible, incredible, and then his um his 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 textbooks that he put out. There's three yeah. textbooks. The, the art of sequential storytelling. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I, I just bought three of those books last year, and I've been reading yeah. them. Yeah, just, just to learn. I mean, what he did in a two page spread is incredible. Yeah, and th th that was when he taught in uh, New York. Those were his uh. Those were his class books, essentially. Hmm. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So if anyone's an amateur or professional, those are probably the most underrated teaching books that are out there. You know, oh, Todd, have you ever looked at those? Yep, I got all of those. <clears throat> yeah, but you ever look at them? Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> Uh, did you ever look at them? Oh, yes, man. I look at them. 
I got a great um, Mike Blue sketchbook too, with a lot of pencil sketches in it. Yeah, I love Blue. Why, why do you like Plug so much, Chester? It's just his last name. No, I grew up. I grew up with his books, man. Uh, Ghost Rider or his horror stuff? Um, all of it, dude. Oh. His Werewolf by Night was uh, that, those kind of horror stories, and mm -hmm. he did military stuff too. You know. Oh, cool. He, he did their uh, what? Cracked, and did he do Mad Magazine too? Um, maybe. Hmm. Hmm. I just know um, when I was a kid, the name on a lot of my comic books was Mike Blue. Yeah, that name just sticks out, doesn't it? Yeah. I think he actually did some uh, magic cards, some art for some magic cards, too. I mean, he did everything. I mean, geez. That man thing. Werewolf by night. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Evening, gents. <clears throat> hey, Brandon. Kick Brandon. <laughs> How you doing, Brandon? Yes. I'm doing a lot better. Oh, I'm sorry. You doing good, Brandon? Yeah, I'm doing good. I, I'm getting over my cold because I've been sick and I've been sleeping a whole lot because I'm trying to fight this cold and I hate it. I mean, if you heard on one of Rick's, Rick's um, live streams, I sound like Batman almost because of my throat. Who's that? <clears throat> yeah, who's this Rick Cross guy? Comics. Yeah, who's this Rick guy? We, we don't know who he is. We, we give him links and he don't appear anymore. Yeah, who's this Rick guy you're talking about? Yeah. Who's this, who's this Benedict Arnold kind of du dude? What's going on? <laughs> I mean, Rick gee. I know, love. Jeez. You get no love from us, Benedict Garner. <laughs> yeah. So here's some some feedback from the chat. Is uh we have Raven Outlaw saying good morning everyone. Good oh, morning. Yeah, P.S. Melter, uh, minute put in Waterson. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, are you talking about Calvin and Hobbes? Um, great storyteller. Yeah, he's the he's one of the best. And then um, John Dillard says, "Oh gosh, never mind. We can't repeat some of the stuff he says." What and then, do you do now? And then uh, Raven says, "Hail John Dillard, the amazing leader of the Gatekeepers." No, Raven, John's not the leader, and that's why I'm not team Raven because you're dumb. And then, uh, oh, 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 okay. P.S. <laughs> P.S. Melter says Eric Larson. And I said, well, I, I'm thinking if you need compressed toilet paper, you could buy some Eric Larson. Yeah. Eric Larson is not in the same vein as the guys that we've been talking about. No, no he's not. No, 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 no. He, he, he never really was. He, I mean, he, he's great at what he does, but he's where he is. And... <laughs> Then John Dillard says, oh, he rips on Todd, which is uh, <laughs> pretty much like choice number three for John Dillard. So uh, nothing new there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And then Risey Lee says, first comic name I learned as a kid. And learned isn't a word, Risey. Just want to stop for you right there. Uh, other than Stan was Claremont. And yeah, Claremont is definitely back in the day was amazing. Even though he was involved in a whole bunch of crazy uh, pagan sexual escapades that I don't want to mention, he was a nut. Um, uh. It's gross. And then uh, Booster says, "Raven Outlaw, can you please bully me?" And so, uh, yeah, Booster, you are a glutton for punishment. <laughs> and then John Dillard, um, then he pulls out his next card, which is Brandon. And then, uh, <laughs> then Violent Valand. What is your name? I don't even know. Vilnid. 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 Your vowels and consonants are all in the wrong place, man. But he mentions the <laughs> Ramitas. 
which is definitely good. Yes. Then we have Pope Fire, the Starfire Outlaw. They, John. John. Pope Fire. John. Okay. Anyways. Um, <laughs> And then, uh, yes, roll call. and then uh PS Melter says my joke was Larson and no Larson just is a joke whether you tell it or anybody else tells it. And then uh <laughs> John Dillard, why are you so mean to poor Todd? Todd's really rich in spirit, man. He ain't poor. And then it goes on to more back and forth. And then John's, John Dillard just said, my chats never get read in this preschool. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, they never get read in middle school or high school either, John. <laughs> so you can keep yelling at the wall. Oh, okay. Bob the Popio, you better run. <laughs> There's some mean wrenches in here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, what yeah, did you, Bob say? I'm glad to check it out. Well, no, he just he just said hi, and there's some mean wrenches in here. <laughs> I just gave somebody back his wrench, and he hasn't even tanked me yet. Maybe I should take it back again. Because he was so upset that I took his wrench away that he unsubbed me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, no. Oh no, he wanted to pull off the wrench. Oh man. Uh, good night, PS Mel Mel Melter. Melter? Mel Melter? Melter? Good night, PS. Uh, everybody say <coughs> hi to you, Bob, which means that's the kiss of death. You're going to be. Timed out. Who, Bob the Pope? Yeah, he was mean on Cross's channel. What did he do? Well, he was clobbering people over the head with that wrench of his. He was he was putting everybody in timeouts this morning. Whoever didn't have a wrench was getting hit in the head by Bob the Pope. What the heck? Yeah, I mean, I, I watch it. I can't say nothing, but I can at least watch it and, and read and do my work. Listen, listen to them, and Rick is all over Bob the Popio, just timing out everybody. Yeah, he's being mean. But you do not have a red here, Bob, so you are fair game. Beat Bob. Beat, beat Bob. Well, the only thing is, I only got Booster and Hope Fire and John as wrenches right now, and I don't think they're going to do anything to Bob. Yeah. Shame on you, Bob the Popio. Jeez. Yeah. I am very stingy with my wrenches. And I think there's a good reason why. Well. I want people to feel welcomed in my chat. I don't want them to fear the wrenches. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking for no wrenches or anything like that. Well, I was looking to join the party, that's all. Uh, you're going to be begging for one. You're never going to get one. <laughs> so what you're telling me to do I sorry I just finished eating uh, what you're telling <laughs> me to do is to go time out Bob the Pope yo. Uh, is that what you said okay I got it I got yeah, it I'm on it boss alright I'm on it <laughs> done, uh, done I forgot. Boss. <laughs> oh no I missed I timed out the wrong guy I timed out yes Melter oh no I'll have to do another one <laughs> Well, oh, geez. no, it wasn't you that did Melter. Yeah, it, was, know, uh, it was John that did it because Melter just left. <laughs> it didn't matter. <laughs> now John is just uh, timing everybody out. Hey, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that's it. I'm taking his. <laughs> <laughs> doing that, John. John's doing that because he. John, man. just watch the road, man. Oh, yeah. Christopher C., you better watch out. You can never tell with this. The rogue wrenches in my chat right now. Oh man! Well, they'll they the cult of Raven is always under the looming shadow of the wrench. Yes, it is. Yeah, as it should be. It's hard being in the cult of Raven. It's dark. Oh, they'll need Ron Lim. Uh, he's 
Oh, man. I like Ron Lim, but I don't think he was much of – he's not the same kind of workhorse store. So I don't remember him doing like two, three books at one time. No, no one did back then, man, because yeah. he got paid. When Ron Lim was doing Sewer Surfer, he was making yeah. like $20,000 a book. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I love Ron Lim on uh, Captain America. Yeah. I have, I have one of those pages, Captain America with uh, crossbones. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I gotta show you guys my, uh, my art collection. Manny, can, uh, Manny yes. can you do me a favor? Yes. Could you please remove uh, Booster's wrench? Seriously? Yeah. Please. Why? Because he needs to be taught a lesson. Oh. All right, my biased lord, I will do it. Bye, Booster. Bye, Booster. Now, if he had been up here, I would not have removed your wrench, but the biased lord has spoken. Oh, um, Booster said, wait, no, Booster started begging. You were safe, but now you're not. <laughs> okay, oh, he just deleted all his messages. Uh, Chester. <laughs> Why do you do that, dude? Poor Booster. I'm sorry, Booster. I'll, I'll crack a beer open for you, man. I know you can't reply. So because, you, what? Okay, my, my question is, you... you does it come back all his uh, messages when he comes back? Nope. No. Really? Oh man. It's no, all my... it's all erased history, man. It's cruel. It's oh. like he was conquered by you know the invaders, and his whole entire history was destroyed. My my chat's gonna be all messed up tomorrow when somebody tries to watch this stream. Well, Manny, I think your chat might get a little messed up every now and then. It's uh, kind of the it's the risk you take for being a provocateur that you are. Oh man, I'm sorry, Booster. I'll give you back your wrench. That's mean. Why? He said he was safe. He said he couldn't be touched. I oh, showed him wrong. That what he said? Yes. Oh, so sorry. Too, he get, he's getting too uh, too uppity. Oh, you right. keep them New Zealands under your thumb, you know. <laughs> Good night, KG. When you have a flight ring, you have a little bit of opportunity to be uppity. <laughs> and in comes Mighty Geek Studios. It's the Mighty G. Greetings, Mighty Geek. What are you working on tonight, Mighty Geek? Oh, yeah, we had to talk earlier. Hey guys, how's it going? Mm. Hello. Oh, going what on? the? What, what the? What the? Uh, it's a, it's a Ryan got? Cardinal. I just Ryan, popped in. Ryan. The uh, bad mouth cardinal. That's me. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep there it are, to a minimum. There are some killer <laughs> artists in this stream, dude. Yes. Who's yeah. the one who belched on stream? Hey, hey, What'd hey. You say? No, nobody belched on stream, and Mr. Brandon, keep yourself in check. You Man, let's try to figure out who the heck did that because I thought I was one being told not to belch on streams. <laughs> All right, mute, Mr. Bellinger. It's on. I'm on it, boss. Okay. He is muted. Mr. Bellinger, we have a new artist that is appearing on our show. When we have new artists. We, we let them speak, and we get to know them. How are you doing today, Mr. Ryan? I'm doing good, doing good. Just working oh. on some of the uh, comic book thumbnails here. I'm on page uh, 61, 62 right now. That so. is awesome. That's a lot of pages deep, dude. Yeah, I figured I might as well try to push his head as far as I can. Because uh, <clears throat> I got like page 27, 28 drawn up already. So it's like, you know, go go as far as I can with the thumbnails. That way I don't have to worry about it later. That is awesome. And I kind of work... Um, kind of like point to point. Um, I kind of break it up into eight page segments and I'll just work on those. That's cool. And, and what book is this called? Uh, this book Kayas. is called uh, Kayas, uh, the sto uh, a story of uh, blood and stone. That's what it's called. Oh, cool. oh, we just had a couple people drop. Who did we lose? Halal? Uh, I know Halal you... and, uh, and KG. No, we still have Halal. Hello, Hello, here. Hello, here. Brandon. Brandon. I think too. We lost Brandon. I think he did not like that we muted him. I do apologize. 
No, 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 no. He, he needs to learn that if there's a new artist that comes in, especially if it's first time, we need to hear him out and introduce him. So, and don't cut people's lines. Right? Right? Am I right? Am I right? If that's what you want to go with, I'm with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, Brian, I mean, seriously, this is the first time you're on the show. We welcome you here. Oh, thanks, hopefully man. you have a great time here and show off some of your work and, you know, get to know each other on this, get her, get to know everybody on the panel here. I mean, Yeah, I've been watching you? watching the streams uh, when you guys pop on, so. Yeah, well, I mean, we've, we've seen you in your in the chat before, so we're like, oh, pretty cool. I said, oh, might as well just get them up here. Mm -hmm. Well, I oh, appreciate yeah. it, guys. Yeah, no problem. I'm a great artist in the digital dojo, man. It's awesome. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. man. I've I've been doing digital work for oh, geez, about fifteen plus years now. Ooh, cool. The so only yeah. real problem is you're another Canadian. Well, nothing <laughs> I can do about that one. <laughs> well, um, you know, if, it, if it counts for anything, uh, I live in British Columbia, and we technically don't have uh, free health care, so. Okay, well that that helps. Yeah, it doesn't help you. No, it doesn't help me at all. And you know, <laughs> so do you have to? Are your lines as long as the other rest of the country when you go to the hospital or the doctor? Oh, yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, and the way they have it set up in Vancouver here is weird. Like there was this incident where my kid got injured at school. So what do you do naturally? You go to the nearest hospital, right? Right. But the way that it's set up in Vancouver is they have a specified children's hospital, which is further away. So my kid banged his head pretty bad, got a gash on the back of his head. So we went to the nearest hospital, which is the general hospital, which is like, you know, stone throw away. And okay. They, and they turned okay. us away. So you went, you took your bleeding kid yep. to the closest hospital and they yep. said, sorry, you have to go to the one for people under the age of 12. Exactly. Exactly. And that was how far away? Uh, it was probably another 15, 20 minutes away. Okay. So 15, 20 minutes sucks. But yeah. in, in the big scheme of things, when you're running a multi-million dollar hospital, who cares, right? Yeah. But the thing so, is, it, it was a potential head injury. And oh, exactly. No, yeah. I was being, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to sound, I was being sarcastic. You know, oh, I, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, man. Yeah, um, which is interesting because there's this thing they called the Hippocratic Oath, right? <laughs> yeah, they found a workaround around that and because uh, everything's corporatized and once you're a corporation, you can make your own rules and we, we, they will not let you see a doctor. You have to get to a doctor and that's why they have the triage set up. You can't get past the triage to see a doctor. You can't enact the Hippocratic Oath. Insane. That's insane. Yeah, my my ex was livid. Like she was shaking with rage, and I was just like, "Come on, like we they're not going to let us through here. We actually have to bite this one and go to the children's hospital." That's insane. Yeah. Um. Wow. So, so I'm glad I brought that up because Raven Allot said this stream is boring. I blame Bill. <laughs> Which, you know, Raven Outlaw blames me for everything because I told Raven Outlaw, I'm not team Raven, I'm team comics. So there. Hey, um, so now, Ryan, you did the Admiral Akbar where he was running down. Yeah, the PTSD before. Akbar. <laughs> Dude, that was the best. Um, oh, was, thanks, man. Oh, yeah, it was the best one, in my opinion. It was better, much better than the Sergeant Pepper uh, Admiral Akbar that John Diller did. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's awesome. I'm I really glad you thought, liked it. I thought that one, I mean, it was Admiral Akbar. If he got kicked out of the cover band for the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. You're not the fifth member. No, but you had like, go ahead, Chester. I'm sorry. Well, no, no. I know Todd is going to yell at me, but I cannot resist it. It's like bugging me. Uh, <laughs> the Hippocratic Oath is based on Hippocrates, which was, uh, of course, a Greek physician. Uh, yep. And his name means someone who is very good with horses. Sorry. <laughs> Why did you think I was going to yell at you? Because you always yell at me when I bring up history stuff. I'm a what? sucker for history stuff, man. Well, I mean, Tank Ferret's reply was Hippocratic Oath is a myth that has been in use for quite some time. And I tell you what, Tank, Chester, all my knowledge is based off of TV. And Hawkeye Pierce 
would take care of an enemy because he made an oath to Hippocrates. Yep. Uh, I, I do know the best TV shows ever. Yeah, and and Ezra Miller ruined it when I saw him wearing one of the nurses' costumes on yeah. your show. Thank you. I, I ruined match for me. <laughs> Blame Denali. That is Denali's fault for sure. <laughs> oh man, unbelievable. Um, yeah, and then Mighty Geek Studio says I'm Team Comics, and that's why Mighty Geek Mighty Geek Studios nickname is Mighty G. And then John Dillard all of a sudden doesn't have a wrench. <laughs> he doesn't. Um, I mean, there's a lot of uh, wrench deplatforming going on right now. Well, it's kind of interesting. The last thing he said when he had a wrench was Manny is never right. And now he doesn't have a wrench anymore. <laughs> and I'm trying to make one of my new wrenches break his cherry by taking out John and Raven. <laughs> wow, because now <laughs> he's now Booster's wrench is back, and he says, "Chester, I'm not your friend anymore." I know it's so sad. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> and we have a me to do it. I'm just following orders. Yeah, that's Ooh. true. Manny's a general here, and then Manuel Corriere says, "Use it or lose it." So that means there's our new wrench right there, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so he must use it or lose it. So come on, Rizy. Yeah, it. there you go. Take it. The power will corrupt me, says Risey. Absolutely. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Enjoy the corruption while you have it before you become a Dillard and you lose your wrench. Just sitting in the corner like Palpatine. <laughs> Unlimited power! <laughs> oh, man. So, have you did you have you studied art? Did you go to school at all there, Ry, or uh For the background? most part, most part, I was self-taught uh, when I was super young, around the ages of like 13, 14. I was like trying to suss out what I want to be. And I was like, oh, comic book artist. Ooh. That's a job. Well, you know, it's amazing how many artists are self-taught. How many of them taste like blueberry pie? <laughs> Very tart. Yeah. No, a lot of, a lot of incredible artists are self-taught. Yeah. Uh, and it's this weird like stubbornness too, where like you just won't quit. Right. Like most people that did, like I grew up with friends that were way better artists than me, but, but they quit, right? They quit. Yeah, exactly. Cause so, they didn't have anything beyond that. It was like, Oh yeah, I can draw. Oh, this is a useless thing. What am I going to do with it? And they just well, walk away from it. There's this thing about talent and about like persistence, right? Yeah. And maybe Chester can weigh on this theory, but you know, people who have natural talent, can get so far in life just on that natural talent but unless they really have fallen in love with that natural talent then they can become then they can hit that level of of master which very very few people ever will yeah, yeah. and the but thing that there's the people who have the desire and the love and they have a little bit of talent and they push 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 and then they can actually be professionals and be very you know put out quality stuff yeah. and then yeah, and then there's, you know, people like Booster who have no natural talent, no real desire, and they just keep on throwing crap up on the screen. But you, Ryan, have, <laughs> you, have, you do have, you. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, because I remember in school watching people who could like, at the age of like 13, 14, they would take a, you know, just a ballpoint pen and draw something that I'm still like trying to achieve. Yeah, like uh, my two main influences growing up were my two cousins, Kyle and Warren. And Kyle, he was like your atypical jock, like really good at sports. Uh, they told him in school, you can fail everything as long as you're still captain of the football team. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, no problem. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I hated those guys. But, but the thing was, he was a really good artist because his dad was a uh, renowned native artist here in Canada, who's my uncle. And so so he, your cousin had a lot of natural talent. Exactly. And uh, he influenced my cousin Warren. And to this day, like my cousin Warren out of nowhere, if he dropped down right in front of me, could draw circles around me. And he's one of those guys that just never saw the value in it. But I'm like, dude, you're a genius. Like, A, your stuff is hilarious. Like, uh, he can draw like a hundred page comic in probably about a weekend. Mm. And it is banging from end to end. And it is ridiculously funny. But he just yeah. doesn't see the value in it. And I just uh, want to choke him, you know, like, dude, you don't even know. Right. No. And that's amazing. That's an amazing talent. But, you know, you in order to be a, an artist, there has to be a, like 
a spiritual connection or mm-hmm. you know, a, a des- just that. And, and a lot of people just see that nowadays. It's just a strong, strong desire, but it really is more intrinsic than that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And if it's not there, you may have the talent, but that desire won't ever come to fruition where it becomes a lifestyle, you know? But you, you definitely have talent and you definitely, I can see you're passionate and I really am looking forward to your book. So are you working on a comic right now? Uh, Yeah, that's what I'm working on right here. It's, um, I developed this in 2005. Uh, I sat down at a coffee shop and I was just like, let me draw stuff that I never really draw. Because at that point I was still tattooing, so okay, it's all like. Right. So you you you're the guy who has all the crazy tattoo stories, okay? Yeah, <laughs> which okay. I uh, I'll keep to the side because yeah they're they're not safe for work kind of stuff. So right, um, and just but, real quick, um, booster, I do appreciate your style, um, but um, oh, the booster tired. stuff cracks me up, man. I, I, I seriously, I, I appreciate your style, but I got tired of break dancing in the eighties. So I don't know whatever that means. Anyways. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Manny. Yes. I do apologize, but I have to correct your cousin. <laughs> Why? <laughs> said, your cousin says, Ryan, do thy bidding or lose the power bestowed upon thy. No. B, Ryan, B, do B, thy bidding B. or lose the power bestowed upon thee. B. Read a read an issue of Journey into Mystery, man. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> so many these and those. But no, so you you took on a task where you're really challenging yourself to do stuff you've never done before. Well, I just wanted to draw something and just see where the drawing led to. So I was like, yeah. let's make a story just out of what pours out. And I was like, all right, well, let's do your atypical, you know, shonen style thing. Let's draw a young <laughs> young boy. So I drew a young kid, and I was like, all right, well, what's what's his thing? Well, he's he's got friends. Who are his friends? And uh, like, oh oh, there's a chicken, and I drew a chicken. I was like, oh, that's <laughs> okay that's happening apparently and i was like oh man there's this weird little like cat humanoid creature behind him okay he's friends with him and now there's a giant rattlesnake and immediately once all those four characters came together this entire story just erupted like just unfurled in my mind i was like oh wow that's a thing so is the title of your book going to be free association or uh how so no, I mean, that just reminds me of like, you know, where we'd have a conversation and like people would just throw out different topics while you're talking. All of a sudden you, you, you change, change the conversation. The next person would come in with the first free thought, the thing that they associated with whatever someone said. It's, uh, a, it's, a, it's a party game, you know, I don't know. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but do you have an outline now, or are you? Are you oh, still dude, the, the story is dialed. Like there are two grand story arcs, and there's probably about fifteen sub arcs within each grand story arc. Oh, excellent, excellent. That's really cool, man. The more you flesh it out, man, the more the better it will be appealing. The more people can dive into the story. You oh, know? exactly. And the thing too is, it's not like a one-off comic. It's an ongoing series. So uh, the plan is to be doing this for quite a while. Uh, like I said, there's two grand story arcs, and once those wrap up, I have a plethora of other in-depth stories. So, how far are you from to, from going to, into to market with it? Or have um, you- no, I haven't gone into market with it because, uh, like I said, I was a tattoo artist for years and years, and that that's an all-or-nothing type of job. Right. So, you know, spending the last twenty years doing that kind of led no time to developing the story, other than just writing it down when I could, and. Now that I'm not tattooing, I'm spending as much time as possible in between storyboard jobs, uh, developing it and drawing it. Ryan, have you ever yes. tattooed a penis? Uh, no, but one of my old uh, buddies did. He said it was super weird because you have to like grab the head of it and knuckle it around your knuckle. Okay. No, we're not going to <laughs> stop it. <laughs> no, we're not How going about the there. Okay. Uh, I've no, come really close. No, we're not going down that. that <laughs> have you ever tattooed the side of someone's no, head? I'm gonna, uh, yeah. Side of the head? Yeah, I've done that. Have you ever tattooed someone's chin? Uh, under the chin. Uh, I kind of had a rule that I wouldn't go anywhere onto the face. Okay. How about the rectum? Chester. Oh, uh, Chester. Um, I've done like butt cheeks, but never like, uh, you know, the starfish. I see. These are fair um, questions, Manny. This is uh, a professional. 
<laughs> when Chester Joey's... does his midnight special live TV channel, then he can ask all <laughs> okay. those questions on Chester. So, no, Manny's, Chester. Manny's right. It, Ryan's never tattooed Robbie Rodriguez. That's <laughs> I definitely saying. have not tattooed uh, Robbie Rodriguez. Okay, good. Have you ever tattooed like a really cool uh, like Hawaiian girl dancing? I've done a couple hula girls. Um, I did, did one on this guy's uh, side of his leg who was super muscular. So when he flexed his leg, she would kind of do the hula thing. Oh, cool. That man. was kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. You should talk to John Daler. He's really good with the uh, Hawaiian tattoos, I think. Yeah, and yeah. that'll be seen on John's show, not on my show. And, and Don, John might want to talk to you about having... Uh... Uh, we lost four viewers. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that kind of show, people. <laughs> hey, man, um, I I only use professional medical terms. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> see, this is this, this is, is the, the fun, fun part. Anytime part. I hop on with anything, thing. it comes around to tattooing. Echo, 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 echo. Who is the echoing person? Was that me? Oh no, somebody was echoing. Hey, Tank just joined the panel. How you doing, Tank? Good. How you guys doing? We were talking about tattoos in unusual places. Oh, oh I know. Boy. I was uh, hiding in the background. Thank you, Tank. My face. Thank you, Tank. You're my only hope, Tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Does that make Tank uh, Princess Leia, huh? Uh, if that's what no, it, it makes me Obi Wan Kenobi, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, Obi Wan. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> Manny's Manny's Leia. Yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> Got some hut slayer going on. Oh man. Yeah, he did. She did slay a hut. She was like the most badass person in the damn thing when you think about it. She killed a hut. Leia, she killed a hut with a chain, man. She's badass. Oh no, that's why. Uh, why are you calling? That's the why fuck? in Spaceballs, you know, she got uh, such the treatment with Princess Vespa. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, she's a little Todd. stuck up little brat in the beginning, but you know, yes. you get her angry, she'll grab uh, that laser rifle. Closer to your mic, man. Can't hear you. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me now better than you did yesterday? Oh, okay, you can back off from the mic. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, <please> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Everybody <laughs> thinks they're John Dillard all of a sudden, that they can sing on my channel. I know, yeah. that guy can sing, man. Well, He's got bars. He's got balls, man. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, he goes in front of the mirror and, and sings a lot of Elvis Prison songs. I bet he's a karaoke fiend, man. I think so. I think I have, have, a have, a, have a blue Christmas without you. Oh, he's going to call in now. <laughs> yeah, we know he's going to come in singing. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I could sing for you if you'd like. Sure. Wait, Joshua Hughes has a has a wrench. Uh, I forgot to take that away. Yeah, I forgot to take that away. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> I gave it to protect him, but I was too late. Yeah. How'd that happen, man? Just sleep at the wheel there, man. Yeah. Oh, and then Raven Outlaws ripping on me again. Bill timed you out because he is jealous of how great you. Chester wants to sing Turn in Japanese. Do it, Chester, because you did. I'm not. I'm not. I'm insulting. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do the guitar, Todd. I'll do the I'll do the bass or the drums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can't hit you with a copyright strike if you beatbox it, right? No, you can't, man. <laughs> because my beatbox is so bad. <laughs> How do they feel about sampling music? I've been sampling music on my channel from the beginning. I don't know. I don't know how they feel about anything because they don't really share their feelings. Oh, man. oh it doesn't matter. They'll just. All right, that's it. 
Uh, Chester. Who can, who can hijack? Chester. Yes, sir. Smack John. Very well, sir. <laughs> who can hijack Manny's channel the longest? Oh, no. I hit the wrong button. Bye, John. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> I don't know. I I was thinking about recording some drum beats for my intro. I have to make an intro because, like, I I really suck at YouTube. I I just suck at it. So I want to make it happen. So I have to study it. I can help you with that. I mean, all seriousness, uh, I can actually help you with that. Really? Well, you've seen my intros. I made those myself. Yeah. Huh. Well, thanks for the offer. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> No, I could use some help, but let's see. Uh Bill, uh in <laughs> yeah, where where's his name? Let me just find that. <laughs> I'm not in there. Am I in there? <laughs> no, nah, just kidding. No, you're 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 smart like me at uh we don't put our names in there. No, not our real ones. And no, no, I mean at all, because then we can be attacked. <laughs> Yeah, well, I probably bring it on myself most of the time. And we can't put my real name in there, otherwise Raven Outlaw will come after me. Because he's a he's one of those kind of people who'll come after you when you're not looking. He's a bushwhacker. So shut up, everybody. So, so who, are you, who are you shitting for now, Todd? Well, let's check it. I'll click on it and find out. So, yeah, if you haven't uh, checked out Ryan's channel, Ryan, tell us about your channel, man. What you got going on? Uh, so on my channel, I basically will do live streams every now and then. I'm also working on a coloring book project, and I'll stream that as I'm drawing it. So this color burning book project, so the color book project, is this a self-published book? Or are you uh, contracted to put out a coloring book? Or what's, what do you uh, got going on? Uh, it's going to be self-published. Uh, I post up the works of progress up on Patreon. And I kind of just develop it. I try to keep each drawing down to maybe like two to three hours. Okay. Yeah. And down the road, once I uh, get, I'm shooting for maybe like a hundred, 120 pictures before I start uh, shopping around for the book and printers and all that kind of stuff. So is it topical? What do you got? What's your, uh, what's your... the theme is sci-fi fantasy. So it, it's a bunch of weird stuff. I can bring most of it up here. If you guys want to check it out. I should share that up. Let's yeah. see what you got. And Todd, what are you working on? You're still working on your children's book, right? Yeah, I'm I'm coloring a children's book. Oh, that's awesome, man. Thanks. So what's uh what's your projected release date for this book? And do you have a <coughs> title at all or yeah, it's called Battle Grannies. It looks amazing. This page actually came out really good. Yeah, that's looking yeah. awesome. So what, what what do you think is the publication date for this book? Because I, I, oh, I don't even know. I'm trying to get it done so I get some money for Christmas. That's all. Nice, man. Well, keep us in the loop for this because if you have something with your name on it, whether you created it, drew it or not, man, but if you colored it, I want to get a piece of that. I will certainly let everyone know how they can get a, a copy of this. Yeah, you've been working on this for weeks now, as far as I can tell, as long as I've been involved in this group i've been seeing you put some put some color on a page and i've been enjoying it so thanks for sharing yeah, i've been i put all the pages together and uh now i'm flatting them all and then gonna work on them i'm trying to i'm really trying to bust it out so what's a what's a turnaround on a page for you <sighs> i guess it really matter it depends on the the content on a page but let's give it an average is it four hours well i'd say i've it took me about two hours to clean like sync all the pages together and and, and clean them up because this is really two pages so isn't shouldn't that have been print ready it wasn't so can I you to clean you, them up do you I charge had, extra for that well i i gave my overall um per page rate is something I worked out with the guy. Yeah. And so 
I didn't realize that the pages were going to come separated and I'd have to sync them up. And I didn't realize he was going to use a different scanner for every page. Mm. So I ran into a lot of things that put me sort of uh, under budget here. So what's a lesson that we can all learn from that? I mean, not I'm not trying to grade school or anything. I'm just no, trying no, to no. You're each other out. be right is to if you're gonna do if you're gonna solicit yourself for this type of work to color a children's book okay. is to be to be chosen while it's in production and and so that you can tell them hey bring all the work to me use my scanner so we all we use one scanner so would that mean they ship you the original pages well the guy is actually local okay but let's say it's not local yeah, they can ship me the pages, um, and I could have a better idea of, of you know, what you're going to end up with. Right, right you're choosing the right DPI, choosing the right, <clears throat> you know, that kind of stuff. So would you say this was, I mean, what you got was a little amateurish as far as presenting it for camera-ready art? Yeah, Absolutely. Um, I had to bump a lot of the blacks up. Um, I had to go in and define a lot of things. Because when you leave something undefined, for instance, here, I'll actually go to something I wasn't really sure about. Well, then the color bleeds everywhere when you go to fill, right? Well, you'll still have to lasso. You'll have to define it somehow. Like, for instance, this curtain. Yeah, this... Hey, hold on. Raven Outlaw, you, you are not my friend anymore just want you to know okay sorry go on so see this curtain right well th i didn't know if this sh curtain should go to the floor or to this line like if this was sort of a belt or something around the oh, yeah because the line is so thin it doesn't define so and you I have just, weird cracks yeah. under the window so right like there's no there's no um like there is no sill it's all window so you got the window but you don't have sort of a a so, box around it, right? Like yeah. this door has a sort of a, a frame around the door, right? And uh, so it's so loose that it's undefined. Yeah, when you do that kind of a thing, ooh, actually, that's pretty good for a second there. Um, when you do that kind of a thing, you make it ugh, make it impossible to grab these kinds of things with a um, a magic wand. So I have to actually trace every little thing. Uh, so, uh, like, for instance, if you go into, like, these, this collage <laughs> hands, you know, and even, oh, look, see, there's even pieces of this sword that are, yeah, dropped out, but, yeah, so okay, it's, it actually added to the work as far as hours spent that really drive me a little crazy, to be honest. Yeah, Something because you like don't, that. when you don't have a defined, hey, will you white box uh, Todd, man? Oh, uh, yes, well, yes, actually, I'm just having too much fun just time outing John. Yeah, I bet you are. You should time out Raven Outlaw. Uh, uh, just... She already got spanked. <laughs> actually, man, we can keep it on your channel just for a second because that's a nice booty. But actually, go back to, if you wouldn't mind going back to Todd. I Todd have his is... white box on Todd. Okay, because Totten is dropping some really good science for anyone who's interested in uh, how to develop <laughs> comic books from at this level of the process. Um, we're learning a lot from them. So I'm sorry, Todd, would you mind? So you have, I mean, the style is really great. It's really loose, but it's it's too loose because you're not, def the, the, the artist isn't defining elements in the panel. And when you're, those elements aren't defined, then it's creating a problem for the colorist. A little bit. I got to make sure I go in and and uh, go in and look tight, you know, which is something <laughs> you hope you don't have to do, but I'm, I have to end up doing no matter what. Well, it raises the, uh, you know, penciling and ink inking, you know, to another level you know to to another level of where, awareness so if you're not aware that what your work does affects someone else and their job and how they can perform and and you know 
finish the job, and then you're doing that person a disservice and creating more work, which delays your project. So you have to think when you're inking or when you're, when you're penciling, you also have to think if, when you're doing something that's going to be colored, how does this present itself to the colors? It's enough. I mean, and that can be overwhelming because it's enough just to think about, from my point of view, it's enough just to think about, you know, panel layout design, making sure a hand looks right, making sure the perspective is right. But on top of that, it's important to realize that this is going to be passed on to another production that has to work with it. And you have to make sure that this piece is acceptable and not causing more problems in order to streamline your efforts. Yeah. Hey guys, I need to jump in real quick. I got to go to work. So I got to say goodbye. Right, Thanks. All right, Thanks. Chester. Thanks, Chester. Later, Chester. Later, Chester. Hey, Later right. Chad. Thundaro crushed them all. Yes. Be a good wrench. All right. Bye, guys. I got to say, man, JP, Later. you're not going to last very Thank long. Hey, JP. You're not going to last very long in that chat, JP. Oh, tear him up, JP. You're the man. So here's a link before you get clobbered. Yeah, bring JP in. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, Ryan, you got to talk up. These guys are hogging up all the space, all the airtime. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't talk, they're going to start talking. They're going to take over this chat. Well, I, I brought up the uh, pages of the coloring book that I'm working on. Cool. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, if you guys want to check that out at all. Uh, the whole coloring book is uh, symmetry-based. Um, and part of the fun with it is I just try and cram as much into it as, as quick as I can. And each one, like I said, uh, anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours uh, per piece. Mm. Clip mm. Studio, eh? Oh, yeah. Clip Studio all the way. I pretty much dropped Photoshop completely a couple years ago for it. Yeah, that is. Todd, I think you need to get him to teach you how to use that uh, symmetry tool. Yeah, that's really clean. That's nice. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I cranked the stabilizing up quite a bit. Um, one thing that I really like about Clip Studio is uh, it really emulates the way that I used to ink with pen and paper. Mm. Um, just from tattooing for so many years, like, you know, I have very deliberate lines when I make them. And trying to get those lines on paper, it actually causes massive fatigue on my hands. But drawing digitally, the way I have it set up, man, it's just like gliding on butter. Like, it, it's so nice. I see you got a G-Pen multiple. Is that what you use? Uh, yeah, I set up a G-Pen to multiply for my sketching. Mm, cool. Um, yeah, so it just... Uh, I just like the way that it feels, the way that it looks. And I was just like, oh, why don't I just set it to multiply? Then it's just like a ballpoint pen and it just gets Ooh. darker when it lays over. Oh, wow. Okay. See, I'm totally ignorant when it comes to that. I'm, I've been analog for years. I actually studied um, uh, back in the day, like the first and second version of Photoshop and Illustrator oh, yeah. and Quark. Oh, and you had to use Quark. I used Quark, yeah. And then... Uh, I did a graphic design job. Uh, what was it? Oh, seven, oh six. I did. A, I was a, in an ad department for for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and that's when you know it was the CS suites were being first pushed out. Yep. And then I dropped it all together, and that was done. I mean, I mean, I wasn't working for that company anymore, and I love. I I would like to get back into it. I'm. I'm messy. I mean, that's my, that's just, <laughs> I'm always cleaning up. So I just was just thinking how much time I could save. Oh, Clip yeah. Studio is the way to go. Uh, one of these guys that I talked to on Twitch, because uh, I stream over there as well, he ended up having some kind of spinal nerve damage. And he was an artist and he was like, man, I can't draw anymore. It bums me out. I was like, dude, get Clip Studio paint, crank up the sensitivity, and it'll uh, eliminate the shake in your hand, and you'll actually get, like, you know, semi-clean lines. Well, that's why I have these big, like, tape bulbs on all my pencils, because oh, yeah. I have tendonitis in my thumb. I had carpal tunnel surgery when I was in high school. I got uh, I got hit. I was in an auto accident, and it jacked up oh. my hand. 
oh man, I know all about that stuff. I almost had to retire from tattooing three separate times because of uh, like tendonitis and uh, ulna nerve damage. And Oh yeah, because you have that, you know, you're doing that same movement over and over again, but at the same time you have that really crazy vibration going on. Yeah, and the weird offset on the machine. Let me, so let me, let me interfere right here. Yeah. Raven, retract that statement quick. We don't need that. Come on. You know yeah. what you see me just said. Get get rid of that. Yeah, see now I don't feel bad that Raven doesn't like me. Yeah. Raven has a potty mouth. Because if you don't retract that, I'm gonna delete all your statements. Just retract that statement. Thank there you. All right, so, carry on guys. Yeah, I mean there's occupational hazards and mm -hmm. what's amazing about technology is uh since so many people have those similar occupational hazards, technology has advanced to um help us you know in a way that's like we could negate those things now oh definitely yeah it's amazing so i think that's gonna be my next big investment is to go digital well uh, if you would do yourself a favor uh clip studio paint is on sale right now and it's like 25 bucks yeah well i would 25 bucks yeah what's it regular uh, it's like 50 or 60 bucks and that's for the entry, but honestly, that's all you're going to need. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm using the EX version and there's just like a couple extra add-ons for making comic books, but you don't really need them. So if I bought it, how long could I hold on to that? I mean, well, indefinitely you, until I activate it, right? It, exactly. Uh, cause okay. yeah, it's on sale until tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, cause I think it's 50% off right now. Yeah. Cause the big expense is the tablet and finding the right tablet and uh, i was gonna pick manny's brain a little bit because he had some great you know well, i got i got some info for you on that as well yeah sure let me get my notepad man all right so one of the things that i do uh luckily i live in vancouver and because it's such a, a technology hub with it being hollywood north everyone sells all of their used centiques and used surface pros as soon as the new model comes out so i always go to craigslist and i look up surface pro threes surface pro fours and uh, Cintiqs on Craigslist. And I actually bought my, both of my Cintiqs uh, on Craigslist. And, and, you look up, and you look up Vancouver for the area, right? Uh, well, wherever area that you're in uh -huh. uh, and see if anybody in your area is having it or somebody in the next area. <laughs> yeah, well, from where, you know, I, did you know where I live? No, I don't. So I live where uh, I'm really close to where Superman was raised. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I know that there are some animation studios oh well actually hallmark has hallmark is located by me and that's a pretty big you know okay um, okay yeah so yeah i just uh, hop on craigslist and see if anybody's actually selling their cintiq that's um, a great idea or if they're selling their surface pro 3 now the thing with the surface pro 3 is because they introduced the new pen i think you get the pen sensitivity on the surface pro 3 and those are dirt cheap right now Okay, so the, the, I'm, you're kind of talking a little over my head when you start to talk about, you know, you buy this. Oh. So on. oh, okay. So you know what the Surface Pro is from Microsoft, right? Hold on sale for one hour and 17 more minutes. Oh, vein pressure. Okay. No, go ahead. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's about the pressure. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so when they introduced their new pen, that pen has, I think it's 10,000 levels or not 10,000, a uh, thousand levels of sensitivity as where their old one was like next to nothing. Okay. So if you get the new pen, the new pen, I, from what I've seen, you, you just get all the, the new sensitivity with it on the older model. So what's the most optimum sensitivity right now on the market? Uh, honestly, anything that's like, I, I haven't really noticed any difference above the 1024 sensitivity. Because 1024. Yeah. Okay. Because anything beyond that, it's just like, what are you doing? Like, how light are you touching the screen? Okay. So that's like pretty much where we've, that's for plateau. Yeah. Like, they're up to like 8,000 something now. And I'm just like, that does nothing, you know? <laughs> yeah. So you could sneeze and draw something, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Okay. So those are some like alternative options that I always suss out because I'm like, Hey, I, I might need another uh, travel thing for down the road. And I don't feel like coughing up like three grand for a new mobile rig. So I might just get an old surface pro three for like two, 300 bucks and a new pen. And then oh. I could put the full version of clip studio paint on there. Okay. So what kind of system do you need to run? 
uh, for the mobile or the uh, um, Surface uh, Pro. Surface yeah. Pro is all in one. Okay. Okay, so if you you run a Cintiq and then you have to have like a, that, you have a lap, need to have a laptop or something to pro, you know. Um, that yeah, if you go with the Cintiq, you obviously need either a desktop or a laptop, uh, or if you get the Surface Pro, it can plug into that with a mini adapter. Okay, so Raven Outlaw, Outlaw that's um, a laptop computer, which is something you you might not ever own. Just you know, putting that out there. But so I could get you one. Out some barbs there. <laughs> yeah. I could get you one. Actually, I can make one for you. But you'd have to swear fealty to, to Starfire, and but the laptop would be free. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool, man. Yeah, I'm gonna get on it. I'm going to go on my phone right now and get some clip. Yeah, it's it's hands down like my my most favorite program that I've ever used for drawing. Uh, although I am looking at uh, Blender's Grease Pencil. I don't know if any of you guys have checked that out. No, I, I know how to use a, a Blender with a Grease Pencil, but I've never used a program called that. Um, well, you know you know Blender, right? The 3D program? No, I don't. Okay, so it's a free 3D software program. You can just download it. Uh, and if you like doing 3D stuff, you can do all the same stuff as all the high-end applications, but they just introduced this new thing for annotations called Grease Pencil, and you can essentially 3D model with pencil strokes. So you can like sculpt and build, uh, not kind of like ZBrush, but you can draw and bring it into reality. So I'm going to be using it probably for environments. So I can draw my environments in 3D, and okay. then I can camera position them however I want. Wow. At least that's the thought process in my head. I'm still uh, trying to learn the ins and out of the program. So how how different is that from actually sending it to like a, a 3D printer? And, and could, would you be able to have that sh that stuff printed from there? Uh, yeah, you can do 3D printing from it as well. There's so many plugins and stuff. Like it's it's quite ridiculous how powerful it is for a free program. Yeah. Sounds amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, they just... They're about to release their actual uh, 2.8, which is like their next big release model, and it has a full animation 2D suite in it, which is pretty awesome. Oh man, what a world we live in, right? Right. Oh, it's it's nutty. Like, uh, you can do all the stuff you can if you're a 2D animator. It, it like it'll make sense to you, but if you're a 3D animator, uh, you could do like this weird blend between 2D and 3D at the exact same time. It's it's pretty awesome. That's incredible. Hey, John Dillard, are you falling asleep at the wheel? Maybe you should get a Red Bull enema, wake you up. <laughs> Straight to Thailand. Use a turkey baster, bro. Yo. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Your chat is vicious tonight, Manny. Yes, they are. They are. They're just going crazy with their wrenches. <laughs> I mean, how many people got timed out and deleted messages and craziness? <laughs> Nobody's safe out there. It's like blood sport. Yeah, it is. Oh, GOP gamer, run for your life. <laughs> <laughs> what did you come into, GOP gamer? Oh, man. oh no! Run, run! run save man. yourself! I just protected you, P Gamer. <laughs> All I'm imagining is the uh, theme music from Star Trek when Will Shatner is wrestling the uh, the lizard guy. The Gorn. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that Gorn was sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Bill needs. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bill needs sleep. <laughs> I lost my wrench. I didn't even use it. I'm so sorry, Bill Deed. Uh, I want to hear Blip abuse our core fan base some more. What? <laughs> oh, man. What is Blip abuse? I need the chat. 
to you, HOP gamer. Hot gamer. <laughs> um, GOP gamer. Um, you would never abuse the power of the rich. Well, let's see how good you are with the rich. <laughs> Night, Mr. Tundero. Have sweet dreams. Night, Tundero. Night, Tundero. Dream, dream of sexy Rick. <laughs> that's that's just me. Dream of sexy Rick with John Billard. Make dream of sexy Rick. What did Thundero do to you, man? <laughs> okay, Thundero, sexy Rick will be flipping your French toast in the morning. No make a laugh, make a breakfast. Oh man. <laughs> Trader Rick. That is yeah. uh, from now on, Trader Rick. Man, he interviews Puerta and then he doesn't want to talk to anybody anymore. I know. He introduced Puerta. He he, should, he interviewed what is that that oh what was the other guy he just had on? The Roddy Piper guy. The Roddy Piper guy. See he he that man and I, Dan. Yeah, Mutt Man and Dan. You see, see, he just doesn't want us anymore. He's in a big time now. He just int interviews all the guys that are in Indiegogo. We're just too small for him. We're small potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rick. <laughs> and the only person he Short brings on his show. Uh, the only person he brings on his show this morning was John. Jeez. So GOP Gamer asks, who is sexy Rick and how sexy is he? Oh man, do you have a picture of Rick? Mm, he's about as sexy as Raven Outlaw. And then Ooh. GOP Gamer says, Is sexy Rick the same as normal Rick? Uh, there's no such thing as normal Rick. So. Yeah, there, there is no such thing as normal Rick. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick is a man unto himself. Is, is that inciting fallacy? Normal Rick. <laughs> No, uh, there's normal. There's no normal Rick. There is no normal Rick. Oh, Rick Piper. Where's Rick at? And then, and then John Dillard says, "Well, since we're making fun of stuff, maybe I can dream of Skunk Lady." Uh, delete his message. <laughs> you <mean> skunk Girl. <laughs> yeah, Skunk Girl. Skunk Lady will never be heard of again, and he knows it. He knows that is a sore spot with me. <laughs> and then Raven Outlaw says, I'm, I'm very <laughs> you Give him his damn wrench and then he abuses it the second you give it back to him. Yeah. <laughs> That's John being dilly dilly. Uh, I guess so. Wait till you go. Wait till you get on his channel, Manny. Uh, I don't get on his channel much because he goes on when I'm working. Don't even know. When I go, go on his channel is on the weekends. You know, but he'll uh, be talking about me tomorrow morning. He'll be going, saw what Manny was doing to me. That bastard. <laughs> and uh, Rick will stick up for him, and Rick will be his. So. His, I don't know. We haven't really talked about any of the big news, man. We have some big news in our community. What's, what's the big news? What's the big news? Okay, there's two big pieces of news. and You want to hear the good one or the bad one? Ah, give us the juiciest, juiciest news. Okay. Juiciest news for the artist here is that John Malin is doing a talent search. Oh, uh, yes. Great, right, right, right. John Malin is doing a talent search. You have until December 15th to submit up to five pages of sequential art okay and mm -hmm. i i think we have some really good contenders not me not raven outlaw but there's some other guys in here like todd like ryan like manny like tank and all of you <coughs> be submitting something yeah big oh, news. No. i'm absolutely yeah. not interested uh, well, if you're not interested, thank you. that's all good, man. I mean, if it ain't your But thing. I highly recommend people to go definitely do that because at the very least, 
you'll get a learning experience from John Manley because that guy does some of the best portfolio reviews I've ever seen. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. Hey, Raven Outlaw, yeah. your mom likes my big forehead. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> That is, I think, the best insult burn oh, I've heard. Oh, wow. God, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, well, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We have some really talented people. They should throw it in there and uh, and just see what happens, you know? You ain't going to lose if you don't try, you know? If you, you don't. Get it to win it. Exactly. It's the John Malin Militia out. A lotto, so give it a shot. Uh, the other so what's one. What's he doing uh, a talent search for? What's the project? Um, uh, he's taking some of the of the extra money he made. You know, he he made a, a grip of cash. He he has two out of three top selling Indiegogos, right? Yeah. So he chunk of change, and he wants to put it back in the community. And doing that, he's like, I want to run a talent search, and with the talent search, I'm gonna we're going to do a book and we're going to use it to pay our, the artist. There you go. There you Heck go. Yeah. And that's another example of how this community is different than mainstream. You know, we have top, we're not hoarding the money. We're putting it back in. I mean, yeah, you're going to make some, I mean, people who can make some money, they're going to make some money, but they're not going to take it and run, you know? Taking a run and then poop on everyone who put the money in there. You know what I mean? So wait, we're not Marvel Comics? Um not yet. <laughs> we still have something to to degrade to or aspire to. No, but um Yeah, I can't wait till I dump a quarter million copies into a discount bin. Oh, I know, right? Can't wait till those filter through the discount industry for the next like ten years. Yeah. Um the other bit of news was um, uh, diversity in comics was uh, attacked for uh, copyright strikes um, this week uh, by the artist Kwanzer or, or and Mags Visaggio. So they both nailed them with uh, copyright strikes, trying to shut his channel down. There's Slick Rick right there, man with his wife um and so the goal was uh well basically kwanzer hit him up with a copyright strike and then sent him a, a letter from his lawyer and youtube did their thing where they're like okay you have a copyright strike against you and, and zach said i'll fight it and then youtube said no well this is the copyright strike where you're actually being this is if you don't drop it there's possible litigation and he said well no i'll fight it and that has to do with the fact that the guy has a war chest that we helped put together so he can fight this stuff. And he didn't really do a copyright strike. It was just a matter of trying to shut him down. So then after, basically, without telling you all the whole story, is that um, YouTube sided with Zach today. So the two strikes he had against him from Max Visaggio and Kwanzaa were dropped because they wouldn't back their play with with litigation that's awesome. good awesome yeah yeah no, no that's, i that's heard awesome about that that's really good yeah because that's the whole point of this is like we just want to do what we want to do they're not going to leave us alone because they you know when they live in the twitterverse and they think they can just say crap and smear <laughs> and slander people and get away with it that's not the real world so they're learning some lessons no nope. so ryan ryan yes you see on my screen yeah that is that is sexy rick with his girlfriend supergirl oh so nice nice that would be rick on the right <laughs> uh, yeah it's sexy rick <laughs> on the right yeah mike my question is where is rick's right hand right where it should be <laughs> Yeah, as long as it's not hovering, that's all good. That's the Supergirl from the Smallville, that's what I think. Yeah, who's yeah. Erica? Or no, I can't remember her name. Uh, oh, okay. Anderson, something like that. The weird uh, name, Laura Vanderwoot. Ah, right, Vander. Yeah, Vanderwoot or something. I don't know. 
And you can tell from her hand, she's just about ready to embrace Rick. She's really yeah. excited. You lucky dog, Rick. <laughs> man. He's the man. You know, he's, uh -huh. He is sexy Rick. That is sexy Rick. Yes, sir. With his Canadian shield on his shirt. Is that, is that his own character on his shirt? Yes, it is. That's his own character on his shirt. In his own drawing, too, right? Yes, his own drawing. He, he did the drawing. He actually has a video of him doing the drawing. Of him going out to that uh, Hamilton Comic Con. Yes, sir. He's a man about town. He's the man. No, I, I'll tell you, the one thing I like about Rick is he's very confident in... Uh, well, he is full of confidence. We know that. With, with, the, with, with, the, with what, his, his, you know, what he does. And also, he... He really uh, focuses on it and promotes it with everything that he does. So a uh, positive uh, thing people could learn from. Yes, sir. But what's funny is he had a guy on his show this morning in his chat, Jonah. Jo Jonah was on John Dillard's show yesterday. And I was telling John, uh, Jonah that he should go on Rick, Rick's program and learn from Rick how to speak better on, on screen. And just, just get some in and outs of it. Because cause the guy Jonah was kind of like first time on camera. So he's kind of shy. Wasn't yeah. talking much. So I thought, hey, go, go talk to Rick and maybe try to get on his show. I think he went about it the wrong way because he wasn't there for very long. I think Rick, <laughs> I didn't hear what Rick was saying. I was just reading the chat. And I was like, oh, there's Jonah. Oh, cool. Maybe, maybe he gets to, you know, introduce himself and stuff. But. I don't know. The next thing I know, the chat is saying that Rick scared off Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what happened there. Oh, man. Because Rick usually gives a lot of people their first chance on his program. You know? You go on there. Not. Yeah, you go on there. You learn how to speak. You learn how to hone your craft a little bit. You learn how to deal with Raven and Joshua, that's for sure, on his chat. <laughs> the troll... <laughs> A trolls for everyone. A trolls for all we have, season. <laughs> we have really nice trolls. Yeah, seriously, dude. we do. We have really nice trolls. They're very well behaved. Yeah, I have seen many of the chat where trolling has gone wrong. Yeah, it doesn't take much for that to happen. No, 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 no. Yes, and tonight our biggest troll in the chat is John Dillard. <laughs> He's very, very salty tonight. Well, John's just trying to keep things interesting, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Hey, Miss, Mr. Mr. Miracle is here. Cool. Mr. Miracle Man. Rick's channel is the one that started it all. <laughs> it's true. Well, for me, yeah, it's true. If, hmm, that's, that, should, that should be one of the, that will be one of the, what you call it, uh, Trivia questions. If I ever do another trivia question, when did Manny first first appear on Cross Comics? Hmm. Well, how would they know that if you don't tell them? Well, they'll get it wrong. I know they'll get it wrong. When, when was your first appearance on the Cross Channel? Uh, no? <laughs> I know. I know exactly when. But you know what's funny? I put Google search for Rick Piper Cross Comics, and my artwork shows up. I feel so bad. Uh, what? I guess he, what shows up? It shows up. Uh, it shows up one of my one of the first drawings that I did for Rick. That's how I got on his program. Oh, cool. Yeah, it shows that uh, Holy Warriors. Yeah, it shows him first, and then I think uh, in that first first line, the first lines, it actually shows the the Holy Warriors. <coughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, he's, he's got his Holy Warriors and I don't know, something strange hero, strange history of WWE. I guess that's the Rowdy Piper thing that he did. And you got Cross Comics, Cross Comics, Cross Comics, and then you got I think it's like so one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth image is actually my my fan art of his is uh, Holy Warriors. Uh, Raven Outlaw says, I miss Adrian. He disappeared. And he's just covering up because he has Adrian in his basement. <laughs> it's true. We all know it. Cool. 
So you guys remember, uh, was it Nostalgia and Criticism? What is that from? That was another uh, Twitter YouTuber. No, I don't think I ever came across him. Yeah, I remember him when I first was getting into like this scene about a year, year and a half ago. And I did, I did a Power Girl drawing that he used for his banner. And then oh, he cool. disappeared. Yeah. Oh, do you do you guys know the history of Power Girl and why she's got such a big personality? Yo, I yo. sure do. Oh, man, I don't know tell the story. It's a good one. Yeah, it's a good story about Wally Wood. Well, I didn't know about it, and we were at San Diego Comic Con, and we were at Frank Cho's booth because I tattooed uh, was it the Shadow of the She Devil on my ex's ribs. So we went by to just kind of show him. He's like, oh man, that's crazy. And I was like, yeah, dude, love your artwork. Love your depiction of women. Like super voluptuous. It's totally awesome. And somehow Power Girl came up and he's like, oh, do you know the history of Power Girl and why she is as big as she is? And I was like, no, no, do tell. And he's like, yeah. So when he, uh, the artist that was drawing it, the editor kept hounding him. He's like, no, 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 make her more busty. Make her, you know, bigger, bigger. And so the first issue he kept drawing it and the editor kept coming over and be like, no, 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 bigger, bigger. And he got so mad that he's like this big. And he's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, that works. So every panel throughout the four issue miniseries, he makes her bus just slightly bigger in each panel. And he didn't catch on until issue three. <laughs> and that's when he's like, Whoa, whoa, what's going on here? It's just like, well, you wanted him big. He's like, no, oh, no, no, that's, that's big enough. And he's like, all right, cool. That's how big they're going to be from now on. <laughs> Yeah, um, Bart Sears in uh, JLE. And that was Wally Wood. Wally Wood was a penciler, and he was a cantankerous, creative genius. Yep. And Wally Wood is really one of our uh, forefathers of the industry. Oh, yeah, man. His, uh, what is it, 22 panels, if you're ever in yep. a bind? Like, yep. Genius, genius. Yeah, it's great that that's online, because that was passed around just through the industry for years. Yeah. That's a huge influence. Um, but uh, I was at um, Wizard World Chicago in the late 90s. And um, no, this was 2000. And, and uh, it was right when CrossGen was huge. So all the CrossGen team was like shipped to, from Florida to Wizard World. That's George Perez, Bart Sears, Ron Mars. Everybody on that team was in a booth. And uh, I stood in line. And I knew Bart Sears was coming, and that's when he had. A, I don't know. If, are you guys familiar with Bart Sears? Yep, the old Brutes and Babes and Violator, and yeah, the guys. In, yeah, he did incredible work, man, and he did really fluid, like huge characters. I mean, his muscles were massive, but he also was like, it wasn't just like crazy bulk. It had this weird, like liquid metal fluidity to like his muscle lines you know i always but, found him kind of like an anchored uh hogarth like hogarth always felt like rubbery if you know what i mean like burn hogarth's artwork oh yeah burn okay okay and bart sears always felt like he was like a, a more solidified anchored version of a burn hogarth wow that's an interesting take yeah because i always saw him as like really f yeah he was more anchored than burn because I actually I picked up a book of his Tarzan um, mm -hmm. from from like the pulps or actually the, his Sunday strips, and yeah, it was really light, really thin, thin lines, really slick stuff. And then uh, Bart Seard had just heavy, heavy, thick lines, heavy, thick blacks, and everything was really fluid. But when he did uh, Justice League Europe. Uh, Power Girl was, you know, one of the leads in this in the book, and yeah, he definitely pulled like a Wally Wood when he drew her. Nice. I mean, she was just bustacular, man. I mean, <laughs> crazy, and it's probably bigger than what Wally Wood did because we're also looking at the early '90s when that kind of stuff was just like hitting its stride, you know. Yeah. And so, I got a a, a small. Um, you know, just a small like five by five or something like that. A sketch, a Power Girl by uh, Bart Sears. Oh, that's awesome! 
for free. You know, oh, no way. Yeah, he signed everything I had, and I just talked to him a little bit. And this is when I was looking at schools. I was looking at going to Cooper to school, and um, he's like, "Yeah, they they advertised that I was a student there, but I was really only there for one year, and and then I dropped out because I didn't really want to do their program." Well, didn't he get hired right away too? Anyways. Well, yeah, he didn't want. Yeah, exactly. He was he was really, I mean, just talented, and uh, they didn't. He didn't want to spend, you know, six hours a day drawing animation mouths. I mean, that's one of the things he had to do while you were there. I mean, yeah. that was his store. And then, um, oh yeah, Mr. Miracle Man says, I love Alex Raymond, the best when it comes to pulp strips. You're absolutely correct. Alex Raymond is one of the masters. Um, and, uh, no, was, so he, he signed everything. I had a bunch of omnibus press stuff. He signed that. And he signed my copies of JLE. He signed everything I brought. And then after that, he drew Power Girl for me. That's and, cool. And, man, you'd get a kick out of this. George Perez was doing the same thing. He would sign everything and then draw mm-hmm. a picture. No charge. And he was doing sketch cards. Cool. Okay. So if you wanted to stand in line and do a sketch card, you could stand in line all day. You would get a sketch card by the end of the day. And he would sign Every single thing you brought. Yeah. That's Pretty super cool. awesome. Pretty cool. John Dillard says good night, everybody. Hey, right, John. Good night, John. Good night, John. Good night. He's yeah, not it's good times. It's good times, man. Like back in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s. I mean, artists appreciated the fans. The writers appreciated the fans. They would sign all day long. Anyone who is charging for signatures was pretty much a scab. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely interesting watching how it shifted over time and how quickly it's even shifted from then in the past couple of years. Well, in the past couple of years, you got to realize DC lost all their old, like Todd was saying. I mean, all the old school publishers, all the old school writers didn't move to California. That's true. Know? And so even then they were getting pushed out the door. I mean, Paul Levitz, when he ran DC, it was some, it was the best DC there was. It really, I mean, it was incredible stuff. I don't know if anyone's got a point to argue on that. I'd love to hear it. You know, I don't don't think so, which is fine. You know, yeah, it really was. I mean, like 2006 to 2009 was some of the best DC comics. That was like the pinnacle of, of their years and years of, of like building characterization and building storylines and building teams, you know? Or maybe not. I mean, it had a downfall. You didn't have, you know, it was right before Hal Jordan. Um, Carmen Infantino did good for DC, I think, said Mr. Miracle Man. I, th- you know, I never liked his style. To be honest with you, and I don't. I agree with kick you. Him, kick him, kick him, kick them both. <laughs> <I never laughs> liked him. Thou shall not speak ill of Carmen Infantino. I mean, I loved his storytelling. I think the guy could tell, could just weave an incredible story. But I had a hard time really loving his line work. Yeah. It just looked weird to me. I mean, it, honestly, it's it's one of those things you appreciate over time. It's kind of like Kirby. I didn't like Kirby when I yeah. first saw him. Yeah, I was the exact same way with Kirby growing up. I absolutely hated it. But as I got older and gained more actual art knowledge, I was like, oh, this this is why I didn't like it. I didn't understand it. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I have kind of a problem with, with art you don't understand. Then going back and saying it's good art. I mean... That's great if you're if you're in an art gallery, but when you're in comic books, I don't know. But I actually, I, I will say that I will say that uh, maybe what you're saying, and I could agree with this, is that maybe you're a little bit more arrogant when you're younger, and oh, you know, like, way you think things should look, and it doesn't fit that way, and so then you, you don't like it so much. And I certainly I, have that feeling. Yeah, I can definitely concur with that. With the. Uh... Well, growing up with the Jim Lee era, too, that kind of puts a, a different view on everything because you're like, well, look at Jim Lee stuff. <laughs> Why isn't everybody this good? Yeah, and, that's like, true. and then you're like, oh, wait, it's Jim Lee. That's why. Right. That's true. Yeah. 
and when you're young, you don't, you don't know that stuff. Like, um, uh, in the beginning, I actually, uh, hated Todd McFarlane stuff because I was a really big fan of old school John Romita. And I was like, man, why does Spider-Man look so weird? And then my cousin, my cousin Warren, who's the awesome artist, he explained it to me and I was like, oh, that makes sense. Now it's interesting. He was, he was like, he moves like a spider. Oh, I'm sorry. I was from actually one of my, my first, uh, favorite like popular artist when I was a kid and um and and uh but but I, I thought those millions of lines were necessary <laughs> you draw. I didn't realize till later on that they weren't they were just you know Todd drawing. Yeah Todd being Todd. Yeah. So when, was, when was the last time you went and looked at some Infantino? It's been a long time. Check it out. But you'll uh -huh. like it. But it was more than just uh, what he did as an artist. He was the editor in chief, and that was a really tough job for him. Um, apparently, I mean, he didn't. He was an artist, but he was thrust into that position, and he made really big decisions for DC at that time. He didn't like the flash art. I remember seeing him a lot in Flash. I just didn't like his art style. Yeah, he was basically just a Flash artist. He did some detective comics, and uh, that's all I can recall. Fantino was on all kinds of books, man. Yeah. He's all over the place. He had a style. That's all I can see. Well, yeah. I mean, my my daughter has a style. That's not a pair to to do. <laughs> no, but his style was, you know, you looked at Infantino and you was Infantino. I mean, you looked at a Gene Cole and you knew it was a Gene Cole. You know? That's for sure. I mean, a style really all it is is it's the accumulation of an artist's work. It's how it's what we put together, what we what, for our skills and what we put on paper. That's our style, and also what we enjoy drawing. That's another big one. Yeah. Well, it's also a collection of our mistakes. This is true. Absolutely. No, yeah. and Infantino. I mean, he did like like Mr. Miracle Man says, Infantino made the Flash. He's the one who came up with the speed lines. He's the one who came up with the, uh, you know, all his, um, what do you want to call it? When, is, when you see all his arms and legs and the speed lines and the light. Like the blurring of it. And... Yeah. I mean, he was he was so uh, graphic and, and, and kinetic. And that was pretty groundbreaking for his day. I mean, that's one thing we have to we also kind of look past. It's like, like you said, we look at Jim Lee and we're like, well, we grew up. If you grew up in the '90s and those were the first comics you read, I mean, you, you see stuff from the '70s. And you're like, oh, it's junk. Yeah. But uh, I mean, Infantino, Ditko, and Kirby. I mean, they established what. Wow. What, what art they established the graphic art, you know. I'll, I'll tell you, I, I remember as a kid going from collecting comics because I enjoyed enjoyed them to collecting co comics because I liked the art styles, right? And when I was collecting them out of pure enjoyment, I didn't really care about the artist style, but that wasn't something I really considered very much. Um, but uh, but when I became, became interested in the artwork, I did. And that changed that changed a lot of the way I looked at my comics in general. And and when I got into comics seriously as, as collecting, as far as collecting goes, uh, as an artist, I mean that's when you had you had Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri and Todd McFarlane and you know Rob Liefeld and and all these guys who were just sort of this explosion of of creative energy and ability that just sort of you know seemed to come together all at once. And so I guess you could say that I was pretty. Uh, I guess my viewpoint was pretty skewed coming into that situation. Yeah, well, and that that kind of happened because um, a lot of the other people who like were what well, made it to open the doors for those artists kind of got just pushed aside so these guys could take over everything. You know, oh. like uh, really, um, you know, the John Bogdanov and and. Walter Simonson and Frank Miller, even though they were huge, when these guys came in, you know, they they they, they weren't the, the leads anymore. And like Paul Smith and uh, yeah, a lot of these really classic 
classic incredible artists, they were no longer the highlight. And so um, it was kind of the same effect of when they pushed Kirby out. It was that aging out process, you know? Well, it was different with Kirby. It was different with Kirby because Kirby always had a home at Marvel. Well, John Byrne, actually, that would be the best one. Uh, Vilna named it. I mean, John Byrne was like pretty much the every man's comic artist. I mean, he had the style that really defined what every single superhero looked like. And he could draw and do every single book that was out. I mean, and John Byrne basically was gone after those guys hit the mainstream and, and, and he was done with Marvel and he went to next man at, at dark horse. He, he did his own stuff. Yeah. Basically he took Superman and split him with different people. Well, he, he turned, super, he turned, he killed, he killed all the Superman mythology and, and started a new version. And that was the 87 Superman. That was man of steel. Right? No, no, I meant what I meant was the next men were basically took Superman and spill all his powers into individuals. Oh, was it? Because I never really read the next man. I only got a few issues, and I remember I got the first appearance of Hellboy was in next man, and I bought that. Mm. And uh, well, he had one guy whose whose only ability was was um, supervision. A girl whose only power was her ability. One guy was super strong, so he took like all of Superman's powers and just kind of split them amongst a few different people. Okay. Yeah, Next Men didn't appeal to me. I never bought it, so I didn't know the storyline there. I bought um, Sentinel of Liberty, where he kind of redid the whole 1940s all-American character. And then uh, there was Damage Damage Unlimited, where he kind of did another like uh, fantastic version of the Fantastic Four. And then he had Babe, which was a new version of She-Hulk. So basically he took all his Marvel... Uh, creds and re revisioned them for at Dark Horse, hmm. uh, and I thought the Next Men was another version of the X Men, and I was pretty kind of tired. I, I was buying enough X Men books as at, at that time. <laughs> I think we all were, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So who who's the artist on my screen right now? John Byrne, or it looks like a Byrne reproduction. Is that? Okay. Oh. That's not burn, is it? That, it looks really like burn, it doesn't it? Yeah, is that you, man? That is Jim Lee. Is that Jim Lee? That's well, Jim Lee is in, Jim Jim Lee, Lee, in the eight. Jim Lee was a was a J John Byrne clone when he first started. Yeah, yeah. You can still see a lot of burn in him even today. I mean, yeah. he's got like a. That's sort of the basis I mean, of his. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he was quite, totally into Burn. And quite honestly, when he first came out. Burn was almost, if you really kind of think about it, Burn was almost a Neil Adams clone, too. You know, he mm -hmm. took that super realism. I mean, Neil mm -hmm. Adams was the first one to make things like realistic. But I also noticed the Sasquatch, he doesn't have any feet. <laughs> uh, earmarks of the 90s. <laughs> this was back in the 80s. I mean, this is like Jim Lee's real early, early stuff. This is like he Jim Lee's influences. This is like Jim Lee in high school, man. No, a little bit after that. You know, I think this is when he was trying to break in just before he got Alpha Flight. Oh, okay. So he did Infinity Inc. and then he got Alpha Flight, right? Did he do Infinity Incorporated? No. Yeah. I mean, I didn't remember that. I think it was uh, McFarlane. Oh, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I do have, I do have one of those pages from Infinity Inc. by McFarlane. Manny, Scott, you got you got a all series, Manny. You've got some serious page work. Well, I I collected back in the '90s. That's why I was smart about it. I got this stuff pretty cheap. I didn't get it when they're expensive. Hey, you, you, smelt, you smelt the price hike coming down the road, huh? Well, oh, you can no, afford just, it, man. That's I great. got tired of comics. I'm like, what else can I put my money to? Oh, I'll just go invest in some of the artwork. So I got, I got a, like six pages, one Burn, one McFarland, uh, Textera. I got one Textera. I mean, I was lucky. I got, got everything pretty cheap too. 
like one of my first because I think I paid like fifty bucks for it. Yes, one the one. You got to do a vault. You got to do a, like not don't do it all at once. Just do like little like five ten minute, not live videos, mm. but just do the you yeah, know the just, good dog press vault. You know that'd be fun. Yeah, that's a just great idea. Look through all my artwork. And then Mr. Miracle Man says, I see a lot of Gil Kane in Jim Lee. And you're right. I think uh, mm. Gil Kane is another um, artist who really pushed comic books from that flat art style that was prevalent during the 50s and early 60s and 40s and all the way up until it's in set from the beginning of comic books. Gil Kane is another artist who moved and moved that envelope into like doing dynamic anatomy and dynamic uh, paneling. And Gil Keane is one of the, of the grandfathers of the modern day comic book, just like Neil Adams would be and Jack Kirby. He, he's up there. Definitely. I'd put Steranko in there too. Is oh, Steranko. Steranko is, he's an, he's a unique individual altogether. I mean, Steranko didn't consider himself a comic book artist. I mean, he was an, he, he was like, it's escape artist. That's what he wanted. That's what his calling was. I mean, he was a he was like a Houdini neophyte man. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, absolutely. That's who uh, Mister Miracle is patterned after. Mister uh, Mister Tank over there, Mister Tank. Can you can you bring that scalpel zero up a little bit closer so we can see that beautiful line work you got there? This here. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm I always the white box. So I'm always see that. Stank's, Stank's work. Tank's work is awesome. Come on, Tank. Show us <laughs> that, Show us that nice beautiful double zero. It's fuzzy, man. That is awesome. You get that? No, it's just fuzzy. Well, he's yeah. got to. He's got to get a little bit closer wow. to his cam. Yeah, potato cam. Oh, Let me know. His, uh, oh, yeah. Okay, you're in focus. Right there, right there. Stop, stop, stop Maybe. right there. Oh, look at how nice okay. that is. Now, can you slowly take it down and see if it stays in focus? Oh, she's doing the hang loose with her hands. That is awesome. She's got a garter belt with ammo on it. We don't want to cut off her head. This beautiful head. Beautiful. Stop, 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 stop. There you nice. go. Very nice, very nice tank. Good job. Thank you, thank oh, you. I can't wait to get a better, better cam set up. Uh, sometime between oh, now and December fifth. All right. Awesome. My wife told thank me this afternoon you. that my Christmas present is arriving sometime between now and December fifth. Well, that's not far. Awesome. And we got Risey Lee saying, no, it's awesome. Oh, we got you, dude. You got some bumps here. We got uh, Mr. Miracle Man saying Stranko for sure. Yeah, and uh, stranko has got a show on TNT on Sundays. So you might want to check that out. Um, and then Mr. Miracle Man says, looking good as always, Tank. Risey Lee says... Thank you, thank you. And Risey Lee, who has lost his wrench, says, looks awesome, Tank. <laughs> and thank Mr. you, Risey Lee. My, Mr. Miracle Man, again, says, that's freaking gorgeous. Gorgeous! <laughs> Gorgeous. And it is. Freaking so gorgeous. I swear, she's got a neck of Atlas to carry all that hair. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. It's I love it. Man. Yeah, so, uh, I don't think so Ryan, I, I, you know, I don't know if you guys knew. So Jim Steranko, he, he would do performance mm. art, escape artist art in New York. And... <clears throat> Scott Free is Jim Steranko. Mr. Miracle was Jim Steranko. That's awesome. Yeah. Fair enough. It's one of the few times where a comic artist has paid tribute to one of his, you know, oh. one of his, you know, favorite people and named an, an incredible character. I mean, cause you know, Jack was redoing his whole, you know, his whole thing. He was taking all his Asgardian mythos, all of his eternal mythos and redoing at DC and the main character, one of the main character really is Mr. Miracle was after his buddy, Jim Steranko. 
and that that's that's honoring you know your your brother in arms there you know mm -hmm. mr Mir awesome. mr miracle man says thoughts on alex toth good stuff awesome stuff highly underrated highly underrated again alex toth is another one who would come into uh, yeah. um one of the granddaddies of what we do i'm looking at his black cat right now i mean black canary oh my goodness oh his black canary drawings just yeah Louise. so toth I mean, toth was um drawing for dc in the 40s and the 50s he was also the lead designer for the Super Friends cartoon. Um, was, was, was he on Blackhawks? I'm sorry, you broke up there. Can you say that again? Was he on the Blackhawks? Remember the Blackhawk? I, yeah, I do, but I'm trying to... I don't, I don't have enough of those to tell you. Mm -hmm. But he has a real uh, heavy, actually, heavy black ink. It, it's it's highly probable because really the Blackhawks was one of the best selling uh, comic books throughout the fifties. Yeah, it was one of the few books to carry over from the forties to still be selling, you know, five hundred thousand copies mm -hmm. a month. <laughs> yeah, it, it did. I mean, the Blackhawks was a huge comic. Uh, that's one of my pops used to collect back in the fifties. I guess he's Plastic Man, right? Well, Jack Cole. I'm not sure. I could look up. I could look that one up. Mm -hmm. I bought a bunch of those, so I have them on my hard drive. Mm -hmm. Very nice stuff. Very nice stuff. That is stuff. Phenomenal storyteller. Yeah. I mean, all these guys are phenomenal storytellers. And that's really where I think um, our our movement can really up really upset the apple cart is we can honor you know our our forefathers and study what they did, whereas the current current creators in the mainstream are are not going to. No, they're not. They're going to condemn them for uh, behavior that was, you know, not necessarily acceptable then, but is deemed unforgivable now. And here's here's something, you know, a person who does not believe in redemption is not a person that you want to be associating with. Absolutely. That's that's a pretty grim outlook on life that that person has it is and, it's, uh, it's a you go to these go to these yeah yeah no you go to these people's facebook and their social media and what do they do they complain about how terrible their life is oh i'm sick oh this is bad that is bad 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 terrible bad life bad and it's like dude you did not listen to papa titus you are a wussy. You know, and the other thing is, it's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing they're complaining. Right? About. <laughs> Hold up, but he's right. It's the same thing they're complaining about 144 days ago, too. Uh, for those who's not familiar, uh, Christopher Titus, the comedian, his dad was a pretty uh, overbearing kind of one of them old school fathers. You know that doesn't that really is trying to do right, but honestly is doing all the wrong things. A little heavy-handed, so to speak. Oh yeah, that's putting it lightly. Um, yeah, and his thing was don't be a wussy. You know, he used to tell uh, Christopher Titus, the comedian, he used to his daddy used to tell him that all the time. It was a running gag on his TV show when Stacy Keach was playing the part. Oh right, right, right. I forgot that Titus had a TV show that was on Fox, right? Oh, I forgot. Yeah. About that. Yeah, and had one of the most manly men of all time, Stacy Keach. He was a crook. Who's Stacy Keach? <laughs> yeah. Crook? yeah, he was busted for smuggling cocaine, man, and dealing coke. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Oh man. <laughs> Why? Yeah, you know, it looks it looks like Alex Toth used to draw a plastic man back in the fifties. Yeah. Well he uh, did a whole bunch of stuff on his Wikipedia. It says all kinds of stuff he did. Flash, he did Detective Comics, DC Comics Presents, Challenge of the Unknown, it's like all kinds of all star comics. Oh, yeah, Western, that's where I recognize him from. Yeah, yeah, he was actually the guy who did the ju first Justice Society comics. Yeah, so he's Adventure one of the comics. The original yeah. guys who drew the first superhero team. Yeah. yeah. Did I used to have a cool. I was going to say, I used to have a collection of the Challengers of the Unknown original prints from like the 50s and stuff. That's a really good comic. Mm -hmm. but none of the reboots have ever done it any justice. No, they can't. Well, they're not really grasping the story. Well, that's because no, they don't get the era. point. We're not in that era yeah, anymore. No. Problem. Because, I mean, that was the age of, 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 of uh, science, you know, and, and finding the unknown. I mean, that's was its own era, We're out of that era. Mm -hmm. well it still could be you know i mean it was essentially the fantastic four without the superpowers yeah but fantastic four isn't as as popular as it used to be either though no that's true too yeah fantastic four is a hard sell these days well not well, i mean the jonathan hickman run i mean that wasn't that long ago and it was amazing did any of you read that no. No, when he killed Johnny Storm. Mm. Oh, is that wow. when, is that when he got uh, stuck in the negative zone? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, oh. I did read that that particular okay. lead up to that part. Oh, that storyline was killer. That was, All right, guys. That was some of the best FF ever, man. I mean, where Reed like started a school with all these like crazy brilliant kids, and like you had. Huge network. I mean, it was crazy because all these little, he had this huge storyline. He had all these little crazy, like Fantastic Four episodes, like that were all reminiscent of the Stanley Kirby run. It had to do with like alternate Earths mm -hmm. and Atlantis and different kind of power sources and Galactus. And it all accumulated, uh, you know, came together after like like two or three years into like this awesome climax. It was some of the best stuff. And he had, and it ended up pushing to get two series. And in that time frame, Johnny storm was considered dead. And you had that's, Peter Parker as that's a what he, of that. Yeah. That's when Spidey hopped on as uh what was this? A moniker again? Um, oh, I can't remember what they called Spidey. Cause he wasn't Spider-Man. He had another name, right? Oh, I know. I, I no, I didn't. I don't think so. Oh, yeah. It was some okay. of the best. Start, what's up? When we start talking about the future, what's up, Manny? It's time to go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I gotta get going, guys. Uh, All righty. We, we've been on here for quite a while. We've been having fun. We've been shooting a dead horse for the last ten minutes, I think. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Bill, where can we find you, Bill? Yeah, um, you can find me in the middle of an iced wasteland that is known as the Midwest. Or you can find me on Twitter at Bill underscore five. Awesome. Or on uh, um, YouTube at Argos Creations. Cool. Uh, hello, where can we find you? You guys can find me on um, NewHero.com or YouTube and find me here most mornings. All righty, cool. I mean, that's some really nice stuff. Sorry that we never got to see it because Bill was hogging up all the chat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, where can we find you, Ryan? Uh, let's see. Everybody can find me on Instagram, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all at the Ryan Cardinal. Awesome, nice work. Awesome work you got there, Ryan. You are welcome oh, thank here. You. Oh, I'll thanks. start sending you the link. Whatever you got time, you know. Feel free to come on. It's no obligation. This is just, I invite, you show up, you show up, you don't show up, that's okay. Hey, awesome. All right. Thank you. How's my partner in crime over there with Scalpel Zero? That is beautiful. Well, white box me. You I guys, am white boxing uh, you. Let me know when that's in focus. Good. Stay right there. 
She's All right. Picking up the screen. She's not in focus, but that's about as good as it's going to get, I think. All right. Well, yeah, that's what I got so far. Very Working nice. Working on very some nice. of the cross hat shading. All righty. Nice. And she is uh, running naked, except for her, uh, except for her gear. Ooh, I can outdo you tonight. Hey, before you, before you all uh, jump out of the chat, please hit the like. We got five oh. likes and fourteen watching. What? Only five likes tonight? I mean, we went up to twenty people watching at one time. We only got five likes. And there was too many wrenches going wild tonight. Gotta take all those wrenches away. Usually, my, <laughs> usually my chat is a nice, good, good chat. It would be getting cut out of hand tonight. Alrighty. So, do we say where you can find you, Tank? Oh, yeah, you can find me on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Tank Ferret Art. You can also find me here most of the time, or on chat with Chester Busby. All right, awesome. And of course, you can find me here every night. And I'm sorry, I came on kind of late. I said I want to come on earlier, and I think I'm going to try to hold to that tomorrow and come on a little bit earlier. Uh, uh, what time is it? I think it's going to be 7 Pacific and and 10 uh, Eastern time. I'll try to get on there earlier. I mean, I thought I was going to get on earlier today, but I went on, over to Josh Chris and hung out with him for a while. So I'm going to try to take that time slot. Don't tell Rick. Rick's going to get angry. Sexy Rick's going to get mad. It's, <laughs> his time, it's his time slot, but I already told him, come on, dude. I need to get some of that East Coast vibe in this in this chat. Alrighty. And I think after me, we might go into the late hours with Tank once he gets his set up. So we'll come over here. That's right. Spend, spend some time here and then we'll, we'll jump on over to Tank's, Tank's please. Alrighty. And on my Alrighty, screen righty. is on my screen is another butt shot, I guess, of uh, one of the SJWs. That's one of the people that Skunker will be going up against, and he's returning back to the SJW Hall of, Hall of Justice, I guess. But that's just a mock-up. It's going to change. I just want to put that in there for now. All right. So thank you for coming to my computer room, and my voice sounds kind of harsh. I was talking for eight hours today, giving a class. I don't do that often, but it really does wreck my, my vocal cords. So I'm sorry if I sound kind of harsh tonight. But thank you for being here. And we will see you again tomorrow. And thanks to the new guys that came here. Thanks, Ryan. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks, Hillel. Thanks, Bill. Thank, thank you, Tank. Thank you, man. Thank you. And we will see you again tomorrow night. Aloha all. Aloha.